Are those childbearing hips? Who carry if you'd like? <laughs> my leg, my leg. <laughs> You're not supposed to play with guns. They're dangerous, you know. You're not funny, bro. Hi everybody, I'm Degenerate, and welcome to this, you and him. Ah, I didn't read anything before I started this, I'm honestly just gonna start it. Middle of nowhere, we're, we're starting strong everybody. 3.32pm. Radio DJ? <laughs> In other news, the hit boy band Cake will be playing live tomorrow night at the Sanita Ali Stadium in Park Bend, Arizona. According to our sources, concert tickets sold out within seconds of their initial online release date, despite the fact that a massive influx of these users caused the website itself to crash. Luckily, they managed to get the site up and running again, but many people were upset since they were forced to log back in and many missed out on buying tickets because of this. If it crashed, everyone should have had to do that. What? And these, this, these guys' music better be that good, because if it's crashing websites, I expect it to be top tier. Thousands took to Twilighter? What? Twitter? No way. Bootleg Twitter. To vent their frustrations while others made light of the situation by making a sh and sharing memes. Many of these posts went viral and got Sanita Ali Stadium trending for three days straight on Twitter itself. The DJ let out a half a huff of breath. I can't believe what I'm seeing in these reports. Can you, Kenny? The car's radio crackles and a new voice joins in on the conversation. His tone coming from across as both juvenile and borderline cartoonish. I don't know how to do that, <laughs> so I'm just gonna read it how I normally read, which is not well. Not in the slightest, and I'm just as stunned as you are. It's fascinating to see these young men who started from modest backgrounds rise to take the world by storm. I don't think I've seen a boy band craze this bad since the 90s and early 2000, two, 2010s. But I don't think those even compare to what you're seeing today. Don't you agree, Bob? Bob? Bob, the first radio DJ who spoke, let's have a giant guffaw. Guffaw? Oh boy, that's an understatement. Even my husband adores their latest hit single, The Way You Make Me Sway, which is saying something. What? Is this significant? I thought your husband hated modern day music. My point exactly. If they can make my husband love their sound, then you know they've got that something special that old men like about them. Oh, that old, them li old men like them and I can't even ignore it. Uh, <laughs> when they start playing Cake's latest single, you turn down the dial on the radio, choosing instead to focus on the long stretch of road before you. Great. I don't know <laughs> if I wanted to listen to it either. The blistering heat already makes it hard to concentrate and you don't need the added distraction. Especially considering you've driven almost 323 miles thanks to your aunt's pleas to gather up all your uncle's valuables and drop them off at his new apartment in the next six towns over and are now on the return drive home sans guns. You tried turning her down, but your mom called and forced you to agree. You better be paying me big bucks. Big bucks. That's a lot of miles. And that's a lot of gas needs to be that needs to be bought. So that means big bucks. Mom. Yeah. Something about being a good relative and the mentions of past actions where your aunt almost didn't treat you like dirt. And yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. At that point you just wanted to hang up and go back to your hermit crab lifestyle. So you agree and took an obscene amount of guns from from your aunt to give to your uncle. 
Huh? Okay. Due to the terms and conditions of their divorce, the judge ruled that since your aunt got ownership of the house, your aunt needed to fork over her collection of guns and hand them over to your uncle. Oh, wow. Is that a good idea? We'll find out. <laughs> Getting the aforementioned guns out of her house was a nightmare. The woman kept screaming every time you loaded the guns into your, your car. You had to restrain her when she kept trying to lunge for you, for your truck, saying he wouldn't know if one or two were missing. Why is she the one addicted to guns? Isn't that kind of like backwards? Isn't it usually men who are like, guns, guns, you know? They're just, they have to have a gun. It's like, oh my God, my right to have a gun. When he refused to budge on the matter, she became in inconsolable and ran inside the house, shutting herself in the bathroom for a solid 20 minutes before you needed to leave. When she returned, her demeanor turned to, to normal. Well, at least for her. Relatives are weird. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Speaking of weird, how long was the stretch of road again? Uh, it was like 3,000 something. I don't know, I forgot. But it was definitely 3,000 something. You could have sworn it was a heck of a lot shorter the first go around. Oh, we're stuck in like a loop of some si of some sort. Ugh, not to mention you need to pee. You regret not stopping by the gas station 50 miles back, actively choosing to ignore the huge warning sign that said gas station in 100 miles. A terrible decision considering the current state of your bladder. That bathroom must was gonna probably gonna be dirty as hell though. So, yeah. You mull over your lack of options when something in the distant catches, distance catches your eye attention as your car eats up the distance between you you make the shape of a large lumbering figure walking along the side of the road with their thumb jutting out and raised above their head hmm what's a hitchhiker doing all the way out here hitchhiking <laughs> uh, that's pretty obvious your bladder quakes never mind you don't have time for this that's true we have to pee not to mention the fact that your mother always warned you about shady hitchhikers now, if he looks sexy, or if they look sexy, my bladder might be the last of my concerns. Letting this man into your car reeks of future trouble. That's why we're doing this. Best to avoid a situation like that altogether. And then he runs in front of the car. <laughs> when you pull right up behind him, you notice a distinct limp in his walk and blood blooming out from his pant leg. That's all the more reason to not pick him up. Never mind. Seeing his injury causes guilt to settle in. I couldn't care less. He clearly hurt. He's clearly hurt and needs help and there's no one else around but you. That's unfortunate. For him. You wrestle with your options when, you, when you, he suddenly collapses into the heap. Into a heap on the side of the road. They are just racking on. There goes your self-preservation. You know what? Let's just pee on him. Wow. He's about to die anyways. Why not? You park just a ways ahead of him and launch out of the driver's seat. Praying to God you don't believe in that he's okay. Let's hope that he's dead so that we don't have to, you know? Because it's like, bro. When you reach him, you fall to your knees and gently nudge his shoulder only to garner no response. Don't seem too bloody to me, but... Are those childbearing hips? What's going on there? Come on, please be okay. Oh, I don't actually have a name. We just- we're just you. That's why I said in the beginning. I thought it was gonna say you, and then it was gonna make us pick a name or something. But I guess... You is fine. And I'm guessing his name is just... Him. You lean down and press your head against his chest. You feel it rise and fall in the sound of a faint heartbeat. Good. Now get back in the car. Drive away. Go find somewhere to piss. Good. He's still breathing. You sit up. You sit back up and try gently shaking his shoulder again. Sir, can you hear me? Mm, no. He's still. He's also conscious. Another good sign. Don't worry, sir. I'm gonna call for help. Okay. You pull out your phone, and then we find out, no service. Ready to dial the emergency helpline when a hand latches onto your wrist in a vice-like grip, and the man beneath you adjusts into a sitting position. Did you want help or not? 
I'm doing you a favor. I have to piss so bad. And I stop to help you. Think about that for a second. Because I would very much favor pissing over helping somebody. For sure. You're taken aback by the man's fierce gaze glaring at you through a veil of raven-colored hair. Don't call anyone. I'm fine. Great. Back in the car. Yes, but... Nails digging to your forearm, not enough to draw blood, but enough to warm you. warn you he means business. I said I'm fine. And that's great. I'm going back in my car. <laughs> Listen to the sexy man call away and stand your ground. Oh, call anyway and stand your ground. Why is there no option to just piss? Can I pee? Like, right here, right now? How would you feel about that? Probably not good. Let's just listen to the man. The man. You lower your phone exiting out of the phone app without a second glance on the screen. Alright, but at least we need to take a look at your leg. Oh, it's the leg. He visibly relaxes at your compliant, compliant nature. And nods. Leaning back so you can roll up his pant leg and examine the damage lying underneath. Blood coats the wound on his leg. You can't even see the extent of the injury when there's so much. You need to clean it off. With piss. Wait right here. Why are we... Just... I should have told them, wait right here, got in the car, drove away. <laughs> because I'm a savage. You head for your car and locate the box cutter knife hidden underneath the driver's seat. I thought we were going to get like a bottle of water or something. Oh, wow. I should really be more patient. Cutting off the bottom half of your shirt, you grab the once cold but now warm water bottle you brought with you for your mini road trip and use it to soak the stray piece of fabric. You toss your box cutter back into the driver's seat before returning to the hitchhiker. The hitchhiker looks up upon hearing your approaching footsteps. You watch as his eyes widen into an equivalently into equivalent into the the equivalent of large saucers. His lips slightly parted in surprise as his gaze zeroes in on the new patch of exposed skin. He studies the shape of your body, tracing over each and every part of you with new eyes. What did we tear again? I'm sorry. Oh, the bottom half of our shirt. That was smart. No wonder. You grow flustered at the attention, but you also don't hate it. Of course. It's nice in a way. You're a little disappointed when he averts his gaze, wondering if you, you misinterpreted the situation. Until he bites his bottom as at his bottom lip, as if he's done something naughty. Your heart flutters at the implications. His reaction's kind of cute. Yeah, that's how that's how they all start. And then they start asking you to cut yourself. For shits and giggles. You lower yourself into his level to his level and try to ignore the blush spreading across your own cheeks. He's really attractive. He has childbearing hips. What do you expect? A fact that you couldn't help but notice when he rushed to his side and saw that intense expression. He's also wearing fishnets. So... Like an arrow striking through your helpless little heart. But that's not the only thing that garnered your attention. The hitchhiker is Adam. The- Are you s Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! He's the leader of Cake. Yeah, oh my gosh. You didn't realize this? No way. What's he doing all the way out here in the middle of nowhere? So I couldn't help but notice, but you're Adam, right? This is... <laughs> Just... The hitchhiker hesitates before nodding. Okay, so I don't mean to sound rude, but what are you doing all the way out here asking strangers for rides? Yeah, you do realize a lot of things could happen to you. You're famous. Adam rubs the back of his head, almost sheepish in his answer. I accidentally drove my car into a ditch a few miles back, and I forgot my phone at the studio. Where? This place is, like, barren. 
So I couldn't really reach out and call anyone. Figured on the off chance that someone drove by, I could bum a ride. <laughs> You're gonna get a ride, all right. What do you mean by that? She smiles then. <laughs> Guess I got lucky you showed up when you did. You're a lifesaver. Why didn't you want me to call the ambulance, though? That's weird. You're weird. You probably killed all your bandmates and then was running away. That's probably what you were doing. I'm just gonna call her right now. You're almost blinded by that smile. No wonder he, his fangirls go crazy. Urging your pounding heart to calm down, you try concentrating on the conversation at hand. And get started on cleaning his leg. You need to focus. I'm surprised your face wasn't injured at all. Oh, was the crash how you got hurt? Adam shakes his head. Cut my thigh open while hiking with my friends a couple of weeks ago. Why is it hurting now? One of the tree branches was a little too sharp and gave me this as a souvenir. The doctor stitched me up, but I guess it tore back open since I started walking. Oh. Likely story. He chuckles to himself. I didn't even notice if... I didn't even notice if you can believe it. You didn't notice you had a gaping cut on your leg? What's going on here? You're surprised to hear this, considering he's got a performance going on later tomorrow night. Surely he should let it heal before going back on stage. Mm. Well, hopefully when I drive back to town, we can get you to a doctor to get it taken care of. I'm sorry I can't do anything else in the meantime. Don't worry, you've been a big help. <laughs> you flushed at his praise. Ah! The smoothness of his voice and the way he says that makes you feel things you haven't felt in a long time. In places you haven't felt in a long time? We're talking about the heart, right? You attempt to focus on the task at hand, wiping away the thick, congealed blood. But it's hard to concentrate when all you can think about is the fact that your hands are near his thighs. And... Come on. We could do this. We're, we're good at this. Oh gosh, you're turning beet red from the thought alone. Nibbling at your bottom lip, you peer up at him, find his gaze locked on your, onto your hands with blistering intensity. You can't tell if he wants to rip your hands off his legs or to guide them towards um towards other more intimate places. All right, so we're gonna make a, we're gonna just take a really quick pause and evaluate the situation, right? I'm all for impure thoughts, of course. I'm all for it, but this is not the time. It isn't. It's nowhere near the time nor place. Just fix his leg, right? And then hopefully get an ambulance to come get him. Because I'm not putting him in my car. <laughs> you you got me um you got me messed up with that one. And just stop. Just stop. Cause we showed no interest in the band <laughs> when they were about to play the song on the radio. So I, I don't see why we're doing this right now. Plus, we're in the middle of fucking nowhere. Get the leg fixed so we can get back on our way. We got hella guns in our car, bro. We gotta go. I'm not trying to encounter any type of authority. So. Let's- we gotta move on. Let's go. The heat warming your body desires the latter. No. Something wrong? Yes. <laughs> His gaze suddenly flicks upward and you jump. How are we not done yet? What's it that he caught you staring? Nothing. Just a little dazed is all. Probably because of the heat. Totally. You duck your head and redirect your attention downward, ignoring- Oh my gosh. Just- Since you're back on track, you didn't notice this before, but the blood on his leg is a bit weird. Is it blue? Is it purple? It chips and peels away like dried paint instead of smearing. Oh! What just happened? What just happened? The man withdraws a small silver knife tucked 
into the waistband of his jeans and lunges at you. You don't even have a spare moment to react before he drives the weapon into your chest. Confusion and terror battled in your mind. You know, you see what happens when you have thoughts like this? Punishment. Yeah, now we're dying. Adrenaline pumps through your veins as you try to fight him off. We were already stabbed in the heart. Like, uh, or not even, the, just the chest. But then again, he probably knows what he's doing. You scratch at his chest, face, anywhere. You can dig your nails into. Get evidence. The dried skin can get in the nails and then... We got our culprit. But he scoffs and pins your arms down with his knees. You watch in horror as he plunges the knife into your exposed chest again and again. Did I do something? You didn't even have time to ask why in the world why the world goes dark. Or why as the world goes dark. There's no way. There's no way. Does anybody want to explain that to me or am I just going to keep looking dumbfounded? We made one choice, by the way. Start again. There was only one choice to make. Skip this. Okay. I guess I'm calling the ambulance because that was grimy. Why did you do that? He's insane if he thinks you're gonna let this whole thing slide. He's clearly injured and definitely needs a dressing for that wound on his leg. You yank your arm out of his grasp and press the phone to your ear before standing up, turning your back to the man as you- What? I'm still, like, confused. As you glare at the sun beating down on you. Could it be any hotter? An operator picks up. Hello, what's your emergency? You cut off mid-sentence when the hitchhiker plucks the phone out of your hands and drops it onto the ground. He crushes the device underneath and s Pissing me off already. A scuffed boot. Hands in his pockets looking almost bored as he does so. Once he's done destroying the phone, you work- You work three years in customer service to pay- Oh my gosh. He runs a hand through his hair and reveals an all too familiar smile. You recognize those features that spanned across multiple blogs on the internet, stratosphere from his gle gleaming white teeth. This piercing wasn't here before, which were perfect advertise perfect advertisement for the ten toothpaste commercials he sponsored in. He sponsored to the scar on his eyebrow that Fangirl's obsessed over. The lead singer of Cake. Oh my gosh, how embarrassing. You open your mouth to comment, wondering how a man like him ended up here when he rushes forward and plunges something into your shoulder. Huh. I think this guy's an asshole. The f What's happening right now? What did I do wrong? I got out of my fucking car instead of driving to go take a piss. That's what I did wrong. You're caught off guard, his momentum pushing you backwards, and your head- What is he doing out here? Like- so many questions, not enough answers. And your head cracks painfully and could- Okay, uh, we got a concussion. Great. The man stands over- y Over your? Typo. Over you for a moment as he wipes the blood off his knife by using his shirt as a makeshift handkerchief. He sm you better say something while you're killing me, bro. I wanna know why you're doing this. Cause you're whack. I'm already getting upset, like, there was not enough time to fall in love with you, it was just straight to being upset. He smiles cruelly as he crawls over your collapsed body with a predatory gleam in his eyes. Thighs boxing in your hips, trapping you underneath him as his hand pins your wrist over your head. You watch as he reaches into his back pocket to reveal a phone of his own. Didn't he say? Oh, okay. He taps into the screen and all of a sudden you're blinded by light. You try blinking the stars out of your eye, confused by what just occurred. He just took a picture. Shoot, I left the flash on. Sorry about that. Oh, about the flash and now stabbing me in the shoulder? Okay. 
You kick your legs and buck your hips in a valiant effort to toss them off your body. Throwing your weight around and hope that you'll catch them off balance. It doesn't seem to phase in the slightest. You give up after exhausting yourself. Damn it. Once you've settled, Adam taps his phone screen again, and this time there's no blinding light. He stares at the picture he just took for a moment, nods to himself, then shoves his phone into his back pocket, satisfied by whatever he sees. You got a pretty photogenic face. These pictures will print out great, don't you think? Shut up. I want you to stop talking. You try spitting in his face, but it misses by a landslide. Oh, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> you know what else wasn't very nice? Nice went out the window when you stabbed me. Oh, yes, that is true. Maybe I wouldn't have stabbed you if you listened to me and hung up the phone. And I did do that. And what did you do after that? Yeah. Yeah. You get the distinct feeling that he's lying through his teeth. And don't peg him. As the honest type, considering he's probably got a bunch of skeletons in his closet if he's attacking strangers for shits and giggles. This is my type of uh, YN. What did you want my photo for? Scrapbooking? No. His face went- His face darkens at your retort. How is that any of your business? You know what is my business? Finding out why you stabbed me? Surely he's joking. You look at his tense expression. Nope. He's 100% serious, but at least he's not cutting you open like a slab of meat. He's a cannibal. If you can keep him talking, maybe you'll find a way out of this mess. Oh, please. Is this really the way to go? This is how you're supposed to do this? A Christmas present for your dear old mom and dad, then? Don't talk about my mother. Who the f cares? Not me. Oh, does he have mommy issues? No, maybe he has daddy issues. Better yet, both. How about your dad? Can we talk about him? Adam considers you for a moment, obviously confused by your cavalier attitude. Despite the current situation, but he's curious enough to see where this leads. What do you want to know about him? No way, this is so dumb. Does he snow like a boar? Did he play catch with you as a kid? Does he barbecue and watch football on Sundays? Does he make corny dad jokes? What does he do for a living? To answer your question in order, no, no, yes, no. And he's a preacher for my hometown church back in Tennessee. Ugh. Like, just ugh. Ah, uh, fan of the big guy in the sky, eh? I'm guessing you went to church a lot as a kid. Adam considers you for a, a moment. Considers you a moment. Ah, uh, so that's your angle. I'm sorry? You guess what is- <laughs> As his nails digging your wounded shoulder, tears prick in the corner of your eyes, threatening to spill over. And you have to bite your lip to keep him in- keep them in place. No way will you let this man get the self-satisfaction of seeing you cry. You want to keep me talking until you <laughs> can think of an escape plan. How? You're like literally on top of me and not in a good way. Well, I'm sorry to inform you, but that won't happen. You're alone. I'm armed with a knife and this highway is almost always de deserted. So you know this. This is your plan all along. You mastermind. Oh my gosh. You know I have hella guns in my car, right? Very few cars drive along this highway, and the only reason people tend to travel here is for nefarious means, or out of sheer desperation. But it's almost always the latter. I would like to tell you here and right now that I hate you. I would know. I scoped out this place ahead of time. Oh, did you? What did I say earlier? That he does- he probably, like, planned this, or- what well, he just does this for fun? He gives you a sadistic grin. But you know what? Why not? I'll play this game for a little while longer. Oops. Yo. <laughs> Angry! It could be fun after all, giving you that small sliver of hope that someone might pass by and rescue you for your fate from your fate. Speaking of fate, let's talk about something related to that. Destiny itself. No way you're about to start monologuing. Don't worry, I promise this all circles back to my father. I could not care less. Now let's see. He paused for a moment to gather his thoughts before he begins talking again. My dad. You know, it's funny, despite being religious and believing in the power of free will, my father also thinks that destiny plays a big role in our everyday lives. He always says that while some things are in our control, other things are milestones made by God 
to teach us pivotal life lessons planned far in advance. A test of sorts, you could say. Stop! Stop! He digs his nails deeper into your wound, and you bite your lips so hard it bleeds. Tell me something, do you believe in destiny? No. No. Mom always said honesty is the best policy no matter the circumstances. Sure, it might get you killed here, but he's probably already planned on doing that anyway. No. You admit through clenched teeth, especially when people like you exist. What sick mystical bullshit <laughs> would send me to someone like you as a test? You feel like one of those dead frogs they use in biology class <laughs> to teach teenagers how bodies work and function. With your limbs all laid out and pinned at your sides, ripe for organ harvesting. You wait for him to slice you open in response to giving the wrong answer, but you're, to your surprise, he doesn't. Funny, I thought you'd try to lie to appeal me, to appease me. Typically when I ask someone a question after they find out their life on the, their life's on the line, they try to fit their answers to one they think I'd like. What, what are you doing? Are you like trying to break the fourth wall or something? I, however, find honestly, honesty to be one of the most honorable traits a person can have. In fact, I prefer your honesty, even if our views differ. Do you believe in destiny? Why does that not surprise me? Oh, I don't. <laughs> I was just curious to see how you'd answer. If you wanted to get to know me after all. Uh, who said that? Oh, uh, who said that? Not me. Even, even if it was just to buy time, I'd figure I'd still extend the same courtesy. I normally don't let my guard down and talk about my father like this. Aren't you happy? I don't consider that letting your guard down. Now, letting your guard down would be talking about your mom's. That is letting your guard down. Because who cares about your dad? Not me. It shows how special you are. No. Honey, no. Wow, narcissistic much? Oh, I bet you say that to all your victims. His eyes narrow at your sarcasm. But you continue on because you can't help yourself. You can't stop yourself. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna be funny while doing it. <laughs> yeah. I truly am the luckiest person alive. I don't deserve you or your kindness. You really aren't like other serial killers. Okay. He reclaims his knife and burrs it deep into your shoulder, effectively cutting you off. <laughs> when he withdraws the blade, he examines the first blood coating the knife and frowns. I appreciate honesty to an extent, but <laughs> you'll fare better if you keep your mouth shut. Totally. Make me. A childish retort. <laughs> Make me. A childish retort in the grand scheme of things, but you'd be damned if he's getting the last two, the last word in edgewise. You watch as he angles the blade, lifting it high over, overhead before bringing it down towards your sternum, with the most cold-blooded expression. You have to think quickly and throw him off his guard to ensure your survival. Chew- oh, clawed his eyes. You've gotta be kidding me. You've gotta be kidding me with that second choice. Ah, uh, you've gotta be kidding me. I'm a clawed his eyes. Why not? You lurch forward as far as you can and try to jab your thumbs, thumbs into his eyes. Ugh. He f he f put his name on the knife? You are so whack. He scoffs and easily grabs your wrist, pinning your hands above your head in one swift moment, movement, using only one hand while keeping his knife in the other. He's so whack. Guys, guys. He's so whack. Adam uses his weight against you, your nose to nose, and you can see flecks of red in, the, in those psychotic eyes of his. He's grinning like a madman. Never pegged you for the violent type. It's not really becoming of you, if if I'm being honest, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't expecting it. I don't like you. You struggle to breathe with the full weight of his chest bearing down on yours. He's enjoying your weak attempts to hold him off. Okay, that's actually a lie. I expect you to cry first and then fight back when crying didn't work. How about it? Why don't you cry for me? 
<laughs> why don't you go get a job like there's got to be something better you could be doing right now no way this is your occupation besides being a f boy yeah uh-huh i got you with that one you gasp with something sharp drills into your side shifting back and forth something sharp you mean the knife tears prick at the corners of your eyes as you hear the sound of your flesh being sliced into like a butcher cutting into meat you better start making a sandwich cuz I'm hungry <laughs> you're trembling from both adrenaline and the knowledge that you aren't making it out of this alive now that's true it's a demo after all so <laughs> oops too late guess I have no choice but to gut you like like the violent pig you are hey I have a secret to tell you come you oh it's still okay he drills his knife down the center of your body staring from your chest and slicing all the way down to your belly in one sh swift moment agony rips through like a vault of ca catastrophic lightning now it's what if someone did come what if someone did drive by <laughs> you try blinking to clear out your vision but find your eyelids aren't cooperating no part of your body operates like it should. You know. I can't believe he's still talking. Adam's voice flitters through the field of white. I almost thought you were interesting and maybe even a little bit cute. But that vicious personality of yours changed my mind. Oh my gosh. You know who would like that? Yeah. I'm not gonna say it because everyone already knows. You feel him adjust himself over your limp body and can only assume he's lifting the knife again. I'm glad to rid the world of a violent person like you. So when are you going to kill yourself? The blade buries itself into your chest, past your ribs, and pierces straight through your heart. The world goes quiet. Great. And you fade into a white. Into the white. Moving on. We're going to be honest and say no. And we're going to skip. And then unfortunately, we're going to kiss him. You grit your teeth through the pain, but it's the first thing that comes to mind. Before you can react, you grab him by the scruff of his shirt and pull him down. Caught off balance. That's what catches you off balance. He drops his knife and braces his hands in the ground, unable to avoid your awaiting mouth. Oh, are you blushing? Again, redemption is not for you. His dark eyes go com comedically wide as your lips touch. He goes still for it total of two seconds which doesn't give you enough time to grab his knife and aim for the jugular you expect him to shove you away to scrub his mouth clean of you to drive his knife down in his disgust what you don't expect is for him to return your kiss with disparate urgency yikes right what he's man who sought that doesn't make sense he's a man who sought thrill from murder but from the the one thing I hate the most is like bad grammar and this is an honest mistake of course because it's writing usually when you're writing something you're in a zone right when you're tip typing I'm guessing he's a man who sought the row from murder but from the looks of it he's experienced much if any intimate interaction he found an undeniable weakness that he's touch starved He's so distracted, eyelids fluttering shut in pure unbashed pleasure. That you take the opportunity to use your other hand to search for his knife. Your hands swipe over dirt and rocks and asphalt. Until your hands manage to land on the hilt of the blade. You make sure you have a firm grasp. grasp man. You lodge the knife deep to his side. Just his side? You should aim for the throat. Yeah. Like Melanie said? Yeah, or Melanie's dad in that one song. <laughs> Class fight. Yeah, K through 12. I know my s You lodge the knife deep into his side. He cries out, rolling off your body, clearly not understanding what just happened. Free from his weight, you take the golden opportunity to sprint towards your car. Grab a gun. Light him up. He calls after you, but you don't look back. Don't, 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 don't call me. Don't. Hopping into the driver's side, you rev your engine and floor it, pressing pedal to the metal. You see him limping after you, 
You should have killed them. Like. <laughs> you see him limping after you in the rear view mirror and watch as he grows smaller before disappearing completely. Adrenaline pumps through your veins, heart struggling against your ribcage. For hours on the drive back to your town, you check your rear view, rear, rear view mirror to see. Oh my god, we should have killed him. If he somehow managed to teleport into your back seat, afraid he'll finish the job. Oh, please. I'm okay now. You say when you see your hometown on the horizon. Hmm. I'm okay. What? Elsewhere? 9.30? Adam manages to return to his hotel room without much trouble after calling in a few favors. Put a shirt on! He's lucky you didn't hit anything vital. This is really after? That's crazy! Just a flesh wound. Just a flesh wound? Oh my gosh. This is why we should have just killed him. He lies back on the king size mattress spent from walking under the crisp sun and getting hurt to boot. Sheets feel cool and oddly ticklish beneath him. Everything feels ticklish since that kiss from hours earlier. Like his nerve endings are standing to on end, hypersensitive to everything he touches. He's absentmindedly stroked Mm, strokes his own bottom lip. He can still taste you. <laughs> the shape of your body pressed against his, and the way you move under him ingrained into his memory. A permanent stamp on his consciousness. He wants to see you again. <laughs> Too bad. Too bad. Touch you. To kiss you. To claim you. We get it. Unwarranted images of you invade his mind. Graphic depiction of your bodies intertwined, fueling his lust. Uh, we're done. We're done. <laughs> we're done. What's going on? Is this like a Sangwoo situation? Adam grips and rips his hand away. Tears pricking at the corners of his eyes in frustration. It is a Sangwoo situation. Your face flashes behind his eyelids, the sun illuminating your frame. Like an angel descending from the heavens. Stop it. Yes, please. You pull him down again. You kiss him. Enough. He chokes out a sob. Oh, now you don't like it. Yeah. Definitely a song woo. He chokes out a sob and curls into a fetal position, wishing he could bleed, <laughs> bleed you out of his pores and untain himself, but you left a mark. Yeah, I stabbed you. Maybe I should have killed you. Put a, would have put you out of your misery. Mentally and physically. If he wants to get rid of this fever, this disease burning within him, he needs to find the source. And destroy it. Great. Adam cal calms himself down by taking a deep breath and letting a plan formulate in his mind. As long as he focuses on the future tasks at hand, he can handle this odd feeling overwhelming him and carry out what needs doing. When he opens his eyes, they shine with a determined light. And he promises himself he'll find you again. 143. No way. I thought that would have been it. Adam only requires a cheap looking picking kit bought off Amazon to break into your apartment. What? A weak defense. How did we get here? Did you really think this would keep him out? Bro! Almost too easy. The way he steps inside, pausing next to your coat rack and allowing to allow his eyes time to adjust to the darkness. He's this is dumb. He scans the room, observing the dark shape of your ratty couch. You're ratty. And cheap coffee tape. You're cheap. That spills with fabric. He wonders briefly if you started in a on a new sewing project of sorts when his eyes catch on something far more interesting. A door left a jar that he can only assume is your bedroom. He slips out of his, of his boots and places them next to yours. It's almost like he's your husband returning from work and ready to join his spouse in bed. No. It's almost too intimate in a way, and he really doesn't like the feeling it gives him. But he needs to stay quiet and wearing large clunky boots would reveal his presence. Not the door opening. He wants to surprise you. Okay, 
to catch you off guard. Okay. Like how you managed to catch him off guard with that. Okay. <laughs> we get it. I'll never forgive you for it. Because you have some unresolved trauma with your moms. Fix it yourself. And not like this, Einstein. Only the thrill of the hunt manages to subdue any inappropriate thoughts that might overwhelm him. Oh, please. He doesn't want to feel this way, you know. Ah! I, I didn't ask. He doesn't like the fact that anyone can wield this sort of power over him because it can easily turn into a weapon. Yeah, that's why I stabbed you. Which makes him vulnerable. Not only that, but the in inherent wrongness itches at his skin. How does he have so much free time? He's a leader of a boy band. No way he has this much time to just find people's houses and like that too. You're a, forbid a forbidden fruit that trickled, that tricked him into taking a bite. Ugh. He wants to laugh at how his name suits him now. I was gonna say something about it because then his finding out his dad was like a priest of some sort, but uh, I assumed the game was gonna do it itself. Did his father think he'd give into his desires? What, bro? Did he believe he'd grow up to become just like him? He was right. A broken woman whispers from the darkness. Don't go his path. Don't go down his path. Of doing what? Her words encourage his already determined footsteps. I protected you from him. Bye. He steals his resolve. He's going to kill the one who tainted him and become pure again. Adam positions himself in front of the door, wondering what awaits him. Are you planning something, or are you really naive enough to think you'd be safe after you escaped the first time? You're really prepared for me, aren't you? His voice carries into your bedroom, but garners no response. Do you have a gun aimed at my head? A bat next to your nightstand? Or did you call the cops? Again, no answer. Now's your chance. Come before I kill you. I wanted to, not gonna lie. Adam's taunting you. Probably because you taunted him in his dreams for so long. He's so dramatic. Still, you don't give in to his games. There's nothing- Am I even in this room? That would be so crazy if I'm not even in the room. He grows frustrated and tired of waiting. Well, my shoes are there, but I could have multiple pairs of shoes. It's now or never. Adam draws out the knife tucked into his waist- into the waistband of his pants. Your blood from the other day still coats the silver blade. Why? I don't know. The color transformed into a deep reddish brown because he can't bring himself to wash it until he uses it to take your life. The single action of taking of your life with this blade will bring everything full circle. At last, he'll be free. Adam knows there's a small bed tucked into the corner of the bedroom. Not the corner. The window <laughs> blinds are lifted, allowing... A small amount of moonlight to spill into the room and illuminate the mass of blankets where you potentially rest. They shift, signaling that someone indeed lies underneath them. Oh, I guess I am there. Or, well, I. I probably isn't even my house. Adam approaches the bed and without hesitation rips the blanket off of your body on, and onto the floor. You startle awake, your eyes latching on him, dazed and confused by the sudden shift in realities. Oh, well, I guess so we are here. <laughs> you were dreaming one moment and now you're drug kicking and screaming into the- what? Into the waking world. Had you not known he was on his way, you really are naive. Who's talking? He thought you were smarter than this, and he's insulted that you managed to escape him. How could someone like the- The words escape him as he sees you, skin glowing for the moonlight, caught of guard- Oh my gosh. I didn't even do anything this time. He keeps his eyes on your face, afraid to wander anywhere else. Then you pull him downward and drown. In, in the blood? What blood? Red of your lust? In the middle of your heated exchange, you stare at him. Uh, a deity perched over the throne. He shudders under your gaze, vulnerable and slick with sweat. This is his dream. He's breathless as he asks, Why did you stop? Because I'm curious. What the f- 
Your body shifts and he grits his teeth, holding back a soft whimper. His hands going to your hips as if holding you. What is what? A smirk tugs at the corners of your lips. Do you like this? You like what I'm doing to you? Adam nods. That's weird because earlier he was talking about how he had to like clean off the taint or whatever. And now he's like, let me change my mind. Yes. He's never felt so good in his life. Adam swallows thickly, eyelashes fluttering, unable to concentrate, but forcing himself to pay attention to your next words. Oh. A little much, don't you think? What's happening? Adam answers before he can even think about what he's saying. Yes. How much do you want me? More than anything? That's weird. One last question. Finally. Do you still want to kill me? He says yes. Adam stares up, to, up at you. We're not real. This isn't real. He's. This isn't real. Obviously. Yes, of course he does. Killing you means he's done his job and can sleep peacefully at night, knowing you'll no longer hurt the people around you. What did I do? He opens his mouth and closes it. Yes, just say yes. He tries again and fails miserably. Good. You continue staring at him patient while you wait for your answer. Your body's still hovering over his. Maybe he just doesn't want you to stop. Is that it? Like he's afraid you'll stop making him feel good? Or giving what's obviously the wrong answer? But... No, that's not it either. As soon as you touch him... The burning still exists within him. The fact that's a fact. It's it's always will. It always will. But the burning transformed into something else, something that ignites whenever you touch his skin. You what? <laughs> the match is freaking sinking inward under Adam's weight. He doesn't even have a moment to process what's happening before the bed swallows him whole. Good. Adam finds himself suffocating suffocating in darkness. He tries to claw around him, but his body remains immobile. Now he knows how it feels. Then he's falling, and all of a sudden he hits solid ground. Okay, better shirt. We like that. When he manages to pick himself up, he finds himself stuck in the middle of the kitchen. And he's dressed in his old Sunday best. Oh, wait. He studies the room. And the aging... <laughs> Rose wallpaper in the collection of colorful magnets. Used to pin up a child's drawing on the fridge, Adam knows exactly where he stands, in his past. A soft dripping sound catches his attention. His eyes drift over the source. Over to the source. Uh, off to his left, where a small square kitchen table with three wooden chairs rests. The Sangwu connections. Each chair is given a hand-stitched cushion to soften the otherwise uncomfortable sitting arrangement. A white tablecloth covers the table. <laughs> With the exception of a scarlet red drop splashed here and there. A yellow piece of parchment paper rests in the center. Frantic black lettering leads to the paper as if the author was running out of time and scribbled down what they could. Are you crying? <laughs> Adam reels back in horror at the sight of it. Not this. Anything but this. How about you just wake up then? You're obviously, like, dreaming. Red drips onto the paper from above. But he doesn't dare look up. The fresh scent of copper floods his senses. He knows the smell by heart. Normally he'd thrive off the smell, but this... His legs give out, and he digs his palm into his eyes so hard that he starts to... He, he sees stars in the darkness. He can't look up. He refuses to see it a second time. Someone hums next to his ear. He flinches away, still refusing to drop his hands, but the person persists. You don't want to face me? No. When he refuses to answer, the humming switches to the, his other ear, and then the singer asks the, a second question. Can't you even look to see how deeply you've hurt me? Apparently not. Bald fingers try dragging his hands away from his eyes. Ew. She's wet. This is weird. 
They're sharp and painful and they manage to get him to finally look up and face what he's been dreading. A cold dead corpse stares at him with bloodshot eyes, the whites glaze over by the grayish film. She, the corpse, cocks her head at a 90 degree angle. The movement causes her clumped wet hair to tickle Adam's face. He whispers her name. The single action enrages her and causes her lips to peel back. What lips? Ew. Into a shriek that shatters the windows and makes the chairs rattle and topple over. Don't call me that. Don't ever call me that again. You betrayed me. You promised me. I'm sorry, mom. I'm sorry. That's him. I didn't mean it. Look at what he did to me. What they did to me. Tears stream. Tears stream down Adam's cheeks as he jerks his face closer to her bruised one. Purple and yellow spots dapple the base of her jaw. Gross. And trail down the slop of her neck, disappearing under the collar of the gray dressing gown she wears. I'm sorry. He's drugged. Drugged to his feet? Is that supposed to be say dragged? He's dragged to his feet by the woman with her hands clamped around his throat. He tightens her grip and he remains limp, knowing this is the punishment he deserves for betraying her like this. I don't know what is happening for betraying his promise and her memory. No, you're not. Shut up. You're lying. She snaps his neck with a sickening twist. Current day. Door Hotel? Ugh, you should have just died. Adam ca catapults? Yes, out of his nightmare, trembling as his eyes dart around the room. The shadows are his demons waiting to devour him. They hide behind the TV screen, under the bed, in his closet. He can't escape them no matter how hard he tries. It's just a dream. That's true. I called it though. Cause it's like, it, he couldn't have found me that easily. He needs to calm down. Adam tries thinking about his hunts. The thrill of carving into flesh. Or ripping through bone and... Sinew? And watching as his pathetic life fade, as a pathetic life fades in his, by his hands. Next time, do it in the mirror. Then that corpse's face flashes behind his eyelids. And he can't calm down. Then you appear. A deep seething anger rises within him. <laughs> anger is better than fear. So he directs all the decision towards you. This, whatever this feeling is, is all your fault. Those weird fantasies won't go away until they're gone. Until you're gone and removed from this life. Get ugh. Get get help. Just get help. He needs to get to you. Now. There's only one problem. After Adam got back to his hotel, he called Saffron and informed him of the situation. Saffron, in typical fashion, took the ordeal in stride and offered to keep an eye out for him. Oh, for for you? For us? No. He spent hours outside of your apartment waiting to see if your car would show up. It never did. Why would my car show up? You You sound dumb. Park Band, Arizona, 8 a.m. Look at this bathroom. Oh, we finally got to piss. A bloody mess of gauge and medical tape you bought at the nearest convenience store clog up the bathroom trash can. Covered up the used pregnancy test and sanitary napkins. <laughs> Dang. Dark smudges circle your eye from lack of proper sleep. A little fact that your aunt would curl her lip at, wondering why you can't get your act together. Always a supportive woman, that one. If you'd taken the guns herself, maybe you'd be off worrying about your next online show and figuring out how to earn a bigger tip rather than avoiding your house like a god infested with cockroaches. But make it a singular cockroach. With a knife. You stare at yourself at the bathroom mirror, biting exhaustion tooth and nail, gripping the edges of the sink to remain upright. A feat in it in and of itself. You shoulder while taking care of for the for the time being likely requires stitches instead of the medical equipment of flex tape 
But who can afford medical insurance in this day and age? Jeez. Not you, that's who. Damn it all. At the circling park bend for half an hour and weighing your options between so returning home or sleeping in your car, you decide on the latter as a, as a safer bet. You don't really want to risk it for the biscuit <laughs> for returning home considering there's a possibility Adam might know your address. He doesn't. The attack itself could have been a one-off incident for a thirsty serial killer hell-bent on getting some kind of action. But if that's the case, what do you take a picture of for? Oh, what do you take a picture for? Apparently in case you ran away or you got, you know, you got loose and then, you know? Maybe you're overthinking this. After all, he could be saving them for himself as sort of a memento for the occasion. You really can't be sure. Maybe it would have been better if... No. You splashed yourself with water. It would have been better if we stayed in our car and kept driving. A questionable color in order to perk yourself up. Chin up, chest puffed. That's what your best friend Jay used to say before he moved out of state to pursue his dreams in the medical field. You plan on taking his advice to heart until you exit the bathroom and meet the gaze of a kid who stares at you with wide set eyes. Do you need something? He's in the middle of picking his nose and wiping it on his mom's sleeve. He never breaks eye contact. Because apparently that's something kids just aren't able to do. Like, they've never seen a fucking human being before. So annoying. Because I encountered way too many kids for some reason. I don't talk to them or anything, but they're really fucking annoying. Why are you staring at me? And then sometimes, if I'm feeling really, like, gutsy, I'll just stare at them. Like, I'll stare right back as if I've never seen a baby before. I would just... This is me, to the kid. Why are you looking at me right now? Do I really look that pretty? Am I that pretty? My gosh. I'm gonna keep staring. And as soon as they break eye contact, I laugh my fucking ass off. Because it's like... You can't take the heat, can you? Let me stop beefing with kids, though. I'm not fucking told you. Upon seeing your gross out expression, he cackles like a hyena. Dumb baby. Yep, he's gonna throw up. He's gonna grow up to become a serial killer. Yeah, we gotta nip that shit in the bud. You bet Adam did the same thing at, at that age. You pull money on it. You put money on it, even. Limited edition cake inspired scratch tickets inside? No, thank you. The doorbell jingles as you step out of the air conditioned gas station into the curb. A sudden wave of vertigo hits and you finally lose your ongoing battle with gravity. An arm sweeps out to catch you. The music shift. Soft green eyes meet yours, paired with a gentleman's smile. Guys, guys, calm down. Shh. Shh. Hello. Are you all right, my dear? You look a little ill. I am ill. Are you a doctor? Uh... Guess, guess that's what happens when a crazy man attacks someone with minimal medical access. You know for a fact, Adam is probably schmoozing in a fancy dancy host hospital. A sort of steak with shaped bits of gold sprinkled on top. No, he's having nightmares in his bed. Yeah, his hotel room bed, uh-huh. The world can't be more unfair when a criminal gets better care than, your, than their victim. They wouldn't know. The gentleman wearing a crisp button up and slacks in 100 degree weather. You seem. We've seen weirder. You just nod and detangle yourself from his hold. You don't detangle. Get more tangled up. Yeah. He waits until you're stable on your feet to let go. Ate one too many pancakes at the pancake house down on West Avenue. Challenge my friend to a contest. But you should see the other guy. Is that. Why well, you've got that nasty blood-stained shoulder? Yes. <laughs> or... I don't know. Your heart stops and your hand flies to cover your shoulder. You wince at the sudden touch. It stopped bleeding. How did it open up again? He cocks his head to the side. Let me give you a ride to the ER. I'm certain they'll take care of your problem in a jiffy. Thanks for the offer, but I can't afford to fork over hundreds of dollars. Just to sit in a room... <laughs> Let alone get stitched up. I appreciate your concern, but I'll manage on my own. 
Then how about this instead? I'm friends with a great doctor who runs a small and affordable urgent care center. He, he even offers payment plans. If I take you there and I promise I can get your bill halved, what do you think? Damn, that's a tempting offer. But one question lingers in your mind. What's in it for you? He adjusts the cufflinks in his button. All I ask is for an entertaining conversation on the drive over. You provide me that and I consider an equal exchange. So how about it? Nope, nope, nope. Sounds like a deal. I've gotten this far. Might as well. Sounds like a deal. I'll take you up on that offer. Stranger claps his hand together like a teacher, proud of, of his student for giving the right answer. Wonderful. I knew you were a sensible individual. Let us be off then, shall we? This looks like a parking lot. What are we doing? The stranger presses a guiding hand towards the center of your back, urging you in the direction of a smaller parking lot located directly behind the gas station towards a small white refere truck parked next to a large dumpster that smells of spoiled meat. Don't do this. Suspicion flares in hot in your chest. This is shady as hell. Anyone well acquainted with the area knows this is a hot spot for drug sales due to lack of video surveillance. You don't want something to caught by CC what? You don't want something caught by CCTV footage, you do it here. Oh. You dig your heels to the ground a mere three feet away from his car. He almost stumbles into you due to your sudden stop. Something the matter? My dear. Is it your shoulder? Are you hurt somewhere else? I can carry you if you'd like. <laughs> my leg. My leg. <laughs> my leg is. Uh, my leg is broken. Ah. Ah. Please. Please. <laughs> is this already almost. <laughs> gets you to start walking again. The word being almost. I think I've changed my mind. He finished the sentence before you. I never said that. I said my leg hurts. And you're not. The smile loses a fraction of his warmth. You're not serious. You don't answer, allowing your silence to speak for you. Corner of Sephiroth's eyes. Uh, this is Saffron, everybody. Get get acquainted. I certainly have. I am extremely disappointed in myself. The corner of Saffron's eye twitches as he goes to rub the, at the spot. You really set on this? When all I asked in return was a polite conversation in exchange for a drive of hundreds of dollars taken off your bill? You okay with missing out on such an opportunity? He circles you almost like a vulture. I feel like we weren't supposed to know who he was until we were in the car. So Now I actually do want to leave. I'm so sorry that you had to be Saffron. Uh, I'm gonna be on my way. But his eyes generally convey sadness and disappointment when he bends his body to match your height. You feel like you've disappointed a parent rather than an absolute stranger. But you're not budging on this one. This just reeks of bad news, and that rougher truck creeps you out. You're making the right choice here. I won't stop you from walking away, walking away if you're sure. I'm sure. Sadly, I'm sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have realized sooner, but I'm not comfortable with this. He sighs and pulls back into his foot. <laughs> Why? He sighs and pulls back into his foot. <laughs> oh, six foot. <laughs> for this casting a shadow over you over your form why is that oh weird shielding you away from the sun like a human solar eclipse <laughs> he straightens and lapins that pulls at his jacket <laughs> a smile returns <laughs> although conveying a deep loneliness you don't understand very well then if there's any <laughs> if there's nothing I could say to change your mind, then that's that. Unfortunate. So I was looking forward to the drive. I'm sorry. You take a step back. Then another. Then another. Well, I'll be on my way then. <laughs> <laughs> I 
turn around and start heading towards the front of the building when an arm wraps around your wrist. <laughs> and so quickly, it might take a moment to catch up. What the? Saffron, why? <laughs> Something gets plunged uh, to your neck. A quick, painful stabbing sensation. It's, it's just as quickly gone. Or maybe it's because the air has become numb. You don't quite understand what's happening as your body begins to slump. <gasps> the world dips out of your, cr of your grasp as soon as you speak them. Thoughts become disjointed like puzzle pieces. Toss all of your child's bedroom. They come together almost as easily as they're ripped apart. <laughs> your body slowly begins to sink to the ground, aided by the person responsible for plunging whatever it was that caused this into your neck. Just let it take over. Don't fight it. You will be your first Saffron! Your eyes get heavy. And his face hovers over yours, becoming a, a blurred mess of blues and whites. You open your mouth to speak, but it's filled with cotton. No. Cool hands brush your temple. I'm sorry, I know I promised to let you go, but I'm afraid. Oh, for Adam's sake, I can't do that. And I'm sure you'll ha he'll hate me for killing you myself. I know he wanted the honor of doing so, but... I thought we were just like being incapacitated. What's happening? Have fun! <laughs> the fact that you escaped him once, we can't risk that happening again. Doing so will bring his ruin in mind. Uh... You try to thrash around, but only one of your arms manages to respond, lifting up in a few tall attempts to push him off. It falls back to your side again, useless. How did, how did you allow this to happen? You trusted Adam the first time around, a complete stranger, and look what, where it got you. Now it's happened again. And this time you can't even fight him off. You're vulnerable. Completely and utterly defenseless. <laughs> Glove fingers adjust the sh straps crisscrossing your chest, waist, and legs when you finally regain consciousness. White hair dips in and out of you while stri- a stranger bus busies himself with ensuring you're properly attached to the cold steel table you feel underneath your back. When he notices you're watching, he offers a genuine smile before pull pulling up the mask resting on his face. Ah, oh, you're up. Did you sleep well? As good as one can after being knocked out with sedatives. Okay, so we did! But you, just, but you digress. It's hard to argue when your mouth feels like it's been stuffed with cotton and your head keeps ringing. Not is like the perfect time to offer your wittiest banter. I apologize for things having to come to this point. I'm afraid for the sake of those I care about, I can't let you go free. The poly doesn't negate the drugging or, you know, kidnapping. You try to say as much as and fail. Nope, your jaw just still doesn't work either. Or work right. Not being able to talk such <laughs> sucks ass. You know. At least with Adam, you got some verbal jabs in before he tried offing you. Weird how do you almost prefer that now? You guess you're one of those types of people who'd prefer to go out with a bang rather than a whimper. I didn't say that, I swear. Not that you like making the habit of running into men with murderous tendencies. We're almost ready. We? He says this as he tugs at one of the straps near your ankles and then around your waist. Are these comfortable? I try not to make them too tight. It causes circulation and we really don't want that, now do we? He waits. Oh god, he actually wants a response. You have no choice but to nod your head. He smiles as he pulls up his mask again. Such a polite guest. A shame. We couldn't chat more. Usually when I get this intimate with someone, I'd like to get to know them a bit better. He turns around towards the table with a large display of tools. Anything ranging from hammers, a buzz saw, to a literal machete. He runs a finger along the razor sharp edge of a meat cleaver and examines it in the light before putting it back down. No, not that one. It's something for my favorite guests. I 
I'm not one of his favorites. When he picks up a scalpel, twisting it around in his feet with his fingers. This is probably more fitting than what we were expecting, right? Cold, analytical, precise. Comes up to you allowing the flat blade to brush against your cheek almost teasingly. Stop it. You try shaking <laughs> shaking back, but your buttons hold you in place. The entire table rattles from how much you tremble and shake. He's choosing what to torture you with. Why not stab you and just be done with it? I drag this out. A cruel smile curls underneath his mask. As you try pulling at your restraints, he can see the fear in your eyes. Your flight or fight sense is starting to take over as your body starts operating properly. He takes the light in it. Yes, I think this one will do nicely. Now then. You twist the blade so you can feel the slight biting cut of steel. Blood trickles down your cheek. Count to three for me. One. <laughs> you open your mouth, nothing comes up but a rasp of air. No, no, try again. I'm a patient man. Why was I about to say four? He said three. He presses his ear close to your mouth. I'm sorry, what was that? You have to speak up. Your teeth clamp around his lower lobe. Enough to draw blood. And send him reeling backwards. There's a clatter of tools as he bumps into the counter and something falls to the floor. You can't see what it is, but you don't care. It's his ear. You just hope that it hurts. Or, no. <clears throat> the man holds his bleeding ear, crimson rivulets seeping through his fingers and tripping onto the floor below. You turn your head and spit his blood out of your mouth. Oh, what was- I thought- I thought we were gonna say four. He said count to three. We're gonna start with one. The man lets out a soft laugh, but it's, it's the void of humor. His eyes switches again. So crass, so vulgar. It seems his voice dips to a dangerous octave. Oh, it still says polite gentleman. It's supposed to like, have nothing. I'm gonna have to train that out of you. Bring it. I'm ready. His eye twitches again and he whips around at your challenge, turning on the radio behind him. Opera music echoes through <laughs> How romantic. Opera music echoes through the room as Saffron readjusts his instruments after bumping into them when, he, when you bit him. Very well then, let's see how long that resilience of yours lasts. He retrieves his scalpel from the floor, which is what, uh, which is that, what that clattering sound must have been earlier. You have to clean it. Oh, but, oh. Uh, a bottle of alcohol. What's he? The man grips your jaw with fingers cold as dead fish and presses his forehead to yours. Let's begin, shall we? He carves into your skin with multiple quick practice swipes. He was supposed to. Did he clean it or no? Followed by a quick uncapping of the alcohol and. You let on an agonized scream. to the no. Last time you let your guard down, you got stabbed, made made out with aforementioned stabby asshole, and escaped by the skin of your teeth. You just take the name of the dark drink and go. I'm good, things. So I appreciate the offer, though. The man nods and digs into the front pocket of his suit before extending two business cards to you. The first belongs to the urgent care center. The second, you assume, belongs to him. Coalition Industries... Saffron talent menu? Right. You've seen guys like this before, claiming they hold your ticket to fame, only to con you out of your rent money. You try handing this card back to him, but he holds out his hands, and which are peppered with splotches of blood, probably from catching earlier. The man of rather saffron gives you an earnest smile. Feel free to call me in case you run into some shovel to any trouble. Gotcha. Well, thanks again. I appreciate the help by any means. You listen out for footsteps as you make your way towards your car. Nothing. And when you glance over your shoulder, he's on the phone and is he texting someone or checking his social media or whatever. Damn, you've become paranoid. Almost embarrassed, you climb into the driver's side of your car and start buckling your seatbelt. 
Wondering why you made such a mental fuss about everything. But when you glance back, you find Saffron staring right at you. And he's licking the speck of blood on his thumb with a bone-chilling smile. Not again! <laughs> you're starting to think your aunt had the right idea with keeping at least one gun on hand. Too many creeps running Arizona as of late. Adam scrubs a towel over his face, pushing back the purple strands of hair plastered on his forehead, his body dripping with sweat. His legs ache after walking the equivalent of three miles on the hotel gym treadmill. But at least he's not thinking about you. Until he's thinking. <laughs> he whips out his phone and checks as much as desperate for so There's something else to occupy his thoughts, but Saffron hasn't given any update in hours. Adam's mouth pulls to a tight line, pondering what's taking so long. What the hell are you hiding? <laughs> But you know he has connections everywhere. Eyes uh, everywhere. You just give up already. There's nowhere safe for you to run. You're his now. The fact that you need to learn a fact you need to learn sooner than later. Blowing out a disgruntled breath of air, Adam folds himself into a plush recliner stationed in front of a wide screen TV. He's never cared so much for extravagant things despite people always offering them left and right. He was taught to never want them, to never accept anything beyond his means. Something he holds onto to this day. On screen, a news outlet discusses the devastation of his fan, this fans facing after the cake's latest concert got cancelled due to an unforeseen injury Adam received while hiking. Not an entire lie. Technically, he was hiking, and his latest target became more than he bargained for. A tidbit the general public will never know, or if he has anything to say about it. Turning his attention back to his phone, he clicks on the message he received the other night from an unknown number that, ju that sits just below Saffron's number. The one that tells him who to kill and where. Your name is listed alongside your place of residence as well as your job application. Adam swallows thickly. He never realize they actually provide a link to your profile his finger hovers above it heart beating a mile a minute he's never been one of those webs on one of those websites before although he's heard people mentioning it in passing but a few people even tried to start a position for him to join to which he declined and publicly stated his discomfort adam's never shown off anything more than his naked torso and those are typically for photo shoots we have an OnlyFans? Why, why? Beneath the belt, he always has been out of the question. His eyes dart back up to your name, and before he can stop himself, he clicks the link. He's brought me to your page, which offers a little bio that describes who you are and the, sp and the specifics of what you offer. Who said I was a... P Yours doesn't have much a way... Oh, yours doesn't give much away other than the fact that you do scantily clad cosplays. And where to find your other socials. Thousands of people follow your account, a fact that for some reason gets under his skin and eats away at him. He pushes away the feeling, trying to investigate with a clear mind, rather than letting what he discovers feed any emotion, but still. The new feelings, budding in his chest, color, coloring... Oh, his words from black and white to a new array of hues with newfound vibrancy are impossible to ignore. They burn like lit coal in his chest as he seems as he sees the ratings listing listed at the top of the page. And there's a lot of them, all five star reviews, all salivating over the custom service services you gave them. All interested in what lies underneath those clothes of yours. And you aren't even bothered by the fact Maybe you even like it. Ah, oh, damn. Without thinking, and too absorbed in his thoughts, he scrolls downward until he lands on your videos. He almost snaps his phone in half. The video he's landing on gives a little preview of what the contents contain, which is you lying in bed modeling a very revealing cosplay that leaves little to the imagination. It's like you're mocking him with your eyes, taunting him in his newfound hunger for beckoning him forward, similar to how you did in his dreams. He squirms in his seat as you as you lick your lips. 
Your taste still lingers on his lips from the day or before. Though the day hasn't passed yet. Your mouth soft against his. Your entire existence drives me, drives me crazy like nothing else before. His pants, despite the fact that their jogger pants just got a lot tighter. Adam puts the phone down, almost slamming it onto the nightstand. He feels so perverted and disgusting with, disgusted with himself. He should. <laughs> Why did he do that just now? He shouldn't have looked. He shouldn't have looked. Because now he wants to scroll through your feed until he's seen every inch of you. So he can devour you with his eyes and commit uh, each detail to memory. Even the foreboding voice warning him away from this path is drowning by, is drowned out by the roaring of his ears and the thump of his heart against his ribcage. Adam grips the armrests of the chair so tight that his nails break because he's afraid if he moves an inch, he's going to reach for his phone again. Watch, watch single one of those videos and it chimes once, a text. Adam is picking up his phone, only looking at the notification on the lock screen. Saffron's name pops up. And the pre preview message is just two simple words. Found them. I, I can't do this anymore. Park Bend, Arizona. You arrive in an old rundown trailer park, pulling onto the onto a dirt drive that leads to a skeleton. A selection of mobile homes clustered together, as if gathered for congregation. Wooden slats meant to serve as fencing over a piss poor attempt to separate them and prove and provide some sort of privacy for local re residents. Two people chatter in the middle of the road and ignore you while you're forced to navigate around them. You almost take out a portion of the aforementioned fence, which garners a visceral reaction from one of the men standing on the road. He shouts profanities after you whack the bumper. After you and whacks the bumper of your car with his steel-toed boot before you can drive away. A cute little welcome back to the neighborhood present, all in the form of a new dent. How lucky. You can't just you just can't wait to beg your aunt to stay. White knuckled gripping a steering wheel, you follow the rocky road, right up until you come across a double wide trailer painted tan with a slightly darker trim. The lawn is freshly trimmed, there's a lovely cactus garden growing, and that's not your stop. Nope, it's a teeny tiny trailer sitting next to a double wide where looking flamingos dapple the, the lawn in splashes of neon pink. Your new possible home. A teeny tiny trailer, not a double wide. Again, you're oh so lucky. You really should start playing the lottery <laughs> to be even more unlucky. Putting your car into park right next to a potted plant that's brown and withered. You step out and notice one of the blinds shifting as though someone bent to peer out, if only to quickly pull away. Hmm. You head for the front door, actively avoiding the middle step of the porch, which remains unfixed over it caved in two years back. You raise your hand and knock it open. Knock to knock, but it opens before you can. A hand reaches out from the darkness, slashes into your wrist, causing memories of Adam doing the exact same thing to come flooding back in a rush of panic and fear. He can't be here. He can't. Before you can open your mouth and even scream, the hand yanks you inside. Another clamping over your lips as the door closes shut. Your pulse palpitates in fear as you try struggling out of your captor's hand. Fight. Fight! Survival instincts kick in and you chomp down on the hand covering your mouth. There's a shriek before you're shoved to the ground, your elbow bang, banging, against, banging painfully against the floor. Above you stand a tall, disheveled figure wheeled by darkness. They nurse your hand, their hand, cursing underneath their breath as they inspect the bite mark you left. The voice is distinctive, distinctly female. Aunt Rudin? What the hell was that for? Oh, whoops. Yep, it's your aunt, alright. I thought you were someone else. Who else would I be? No one else lives here, you stupid brat. You turn and <laughs> you hear a dead bolt lock into place, followed by the rapid succession of four more clicks coming soon after. 
How did she get all those extra locks? There was only one last... There was only one the last time you checked. Uh, on route. Spittle flies from her lips as she hush hushes you and your mouth clamps shut with the resounding snap of your teeth. You watch as your aunt presses your ear against her ear against the door, quieting her breath like she's afraid someone will overhear. There's only two possible reasons for this. Either the pro problematic neighbors are drawing Venus Venus is on her flamingos again, or something really sketchy is going on. No pun intended. Shut up. When Ruth finally pulls away from the door, she breathes a dramatic sigh of relief. Full on, pressing, full on pressing a hand to her chest and thanking God, as if you're not standing there witnessing the whole debacle. Before you can com comment on her erratic behavior, your aunt turns to you with her arms crossed over her chest, clucking her tongue. Now tell me why you're here. When you don't answer fast enough for her liking, she sneers. What, did your uncle demand you take something else from me? Sorry to disappoint the two of you, but I have nothing left to give i'm not here because of him i'm here because my living situation has gotten a bit complicated i need a place to stay while i sort things out your aunt's eyes narrow for at least or at least you imagine they do considering you can't see through the distinct lack of lighting <laughs> but you know your aunt's change change in expression due to the disturbance in the air a slight shift in the winds you've trained long and hard to read situations like this Guided by your baby, baby ancestors? I am so sorry, I don't know what that said. Okay, Star Wars. Star Wars, jokes aside, you just know her by now. Oh, so you're only visiting because you want something from me? Why am I not surprised? The comment irks you. You were delivering those guns for. Who were you delivering those guns for again? Certainly not yourself. That road trip from hell is the entire reason you're in this mess with Adam in the first place. If you ever cross paths again, or never cross paths, and it's not like you want to room with her, but you've got nowhere else to go. Not when you discovered your worst fear a couple of hours ago, earlier. I'm already two hours earlier. Guys. I, I can't keep doing this. This is supposed to be a demo. Demos aren't supposed to be recorded for two hours. We're, we're reaching that point. <laughs> Guys, it's been like... I don't even know how long. Probably a week since I re recorded this last. I'm just gonna play <laughs> the rest of it. After repairing your shoulder and taking a quick power nap in f the front seat of your car, you find yourself sandwiched between two between booths and briars bar. Booths and briars bar and grill, nursing a glass of water with an empty plate in front of you. You were drawn in by the warm smells and advertisement of cheap food. Searching your car for pocket change, you manage to scrounge up just enough in order to get something decent and moderately filling. The way your jaw unhinged when you dug into your meal kind of scared the waiter off. Uh, who is he to judge? He has an axe to refill your glass, and every time you glance over at him, he looks a little pale, opting to converse with other patrons instead. Who is this schmuck? Not that you mind. As long as you're allowed to loiter while you come up with the plan, you don't mind the lack of service. Besides, after running into Adam and Saffron, conversing with normal people proves difficult. You struggle a bit before which is why your inner circle of friends remains few and far between. And now, now everyone is a potential threat and in order to survive, you need to approach things carefully. Thank you for telling me, game. This includes interacting with strangers. What you need is a friend or family member you can trust. Not our aunt, though. Someone who can help you while you try to decide if you're going to keep your apartment or skip town. Skip town. A temporary place of refuge. You make a mental list of potential prospects 
crossing out those who live out of state or those whom you've lost contact with, eliminating almost everyone in the process. All except for one. Oh, not our aunt. Aunt Ruth comes to mind due to her sheer proximity and availability rather than the level of trust you share with her. But she's your best bet, so guess I gotta settle. Still, you can return home and put this entire thing behind you thanks to the possibility of Adam losing interest. He has not lost interest. Maybe he thought you were an easy target. <laughs> Boy, was he wrong. <laughs> and you weren't, so maybe... Nah. A drunken shout draws your attention towards the front of the bar where an older gentleman waves a busted TV remote in the air. Batteries, get me batteries. I'm gonna miss the big game because of the stupid celebrity bullshit. <laughs> ah, his words slurred together in a tangled mess. When the bartender ignores him, the man leans across the counter and tries yanking at the man's pants. The bartender rolls his eyes as he cleans a glass with a white dish towel and simply steps away. We've been over this, Jamie. Please don't make me call the call the police on you again. The drunk man, or Jamie, as the bartender called him, slumps back into his, in his seat and grumbles as he call, chucks the remote into the bar. Rude. He folds his arm over his chest like a spoiled child who just got told he couldn't have dessert before dinner. Your eyes glide towards the TV to see what channel the TV stuck on when your entire body gets rigid. Adam. Yikes. I, ugh don't like him on screen the camera captures close-up shots of adam's signature purple hair to his iconic earring before finally landing on his face <laughs> he beams at the camera with the same exact smile he wore moments before plunging the knife into your shoulder a wolf in sheep's clothing or no clothing because he tends to wear very revealing clothes even if he's fully clothed, you can very much see his figure. The fishnets is insane. Look, he keeps with the fishnets. <laughs> he loves fishnet. He really knows how to blend in, huh? Your nails dig into the meat on your, of your thigh, wishing you could expose his true identity. And the camera switches over to the interviewer, who already wears a smile of her own. He about to die too. She introduces herself as Lawrence de de Taba de Tabano. And exudes practice confidence that one can only develop after years of working with A-list celebrities. Today, we're here with Adam... What? Adam Godin? Composer and lead vocalist of Cake. <laughs> she turns to him and straightens a stack of laminated cards in her knee. Now, Adam, I heard about the accident and wanted to make sure you can handle doing this interview. Don't worry about rescheduling and just be honest with me. How are you feeling? Your stomach plummets at the mention of the accident. An interview from today? Sure enough, there's a slight bulge underneath his shirt. Right above his hip bone. Is that the knife? That he just holds with him all the time? Clear cut evidence he made his way off the highway with the scar to prove it. Oh, okay. I thought it was the knife. There's a bulge, so wouldn't it be the knife? I feel like I'm right. Harvey wishes he'd bleed out on the as asphalt, but you knew the blade didn't go deep enough to cause irreversible damage. I should have. You meant to ma maim, not kill, unlike a certain someone. And now here that certain someone is continuing on with his life while you're loitering. At an 18 and up bar, out of fear. Every bar is 18 and up. What? What complete and utter bullshit. I'm great, Lawrence. And happy to be here. My injury was pretty shallow, and we're just taking extra precautions to ensure my recovery goes smoothly. I'll be up and running again in no time at all. He turns toward the camera and took a... And you tense on reflex. Nasty. It's as if he's looking straight into you with those sharp, introspective eyes. The smile he gives the camera comes slow and mocking. After all, you can't get rid of me that easily. 
how does he know I would be watching it? I don't get it. Like, I... He's like, oh, I hope she's watching right now. Huh? Shut up, Adam. Like, actually, stop talking. Lawrence gives you a, natu a good natured laugh. Oh, Lawrence gives a good natured laugh. Okay, my bad. But the hairs on the back of your neck stand at end. To end. To anyone else, he's a man determined to get back on his feet. But you know, the comment was meant for you. I don't care. Like, the amount of f I give, like, they're non existent. It's his small way of saying he's not letting you go. Not by a long shot. You stare at the melting ice in your glass, trying to control your breathing as the interview presses a hand. Interviewer presses a hand over your heart. What? Oh, her heart. I think I can speak for most of us when I say we're happy to hear that you have such a wonderful support system taking care of you. Shut up. Now you mentioned a while back that you, you and the members of Cake are pretty close. I assume they're part of your support system. Of course, they're like my brothers. They're my family. Same goes for my manager your manager I'm mad that he's a bad guy then does he tell his found family about his cute hobby of disemboweling dis dis people no obviously not come on do they go on brotherly bonding expeditions and laugh in the face of their victims I doubt it because this game is called you and him not you and them so are all the members of cake just as messed up as their leader we have never seen them or better or better question yet are they all looking for you the lamb who managed to escape the slaughter well only one of them wait that's that is something to think about what if all the members are like in on it because um saffron unfortunately is but he's also crazy himself so Having to do with like, what are the three member, three other members? That's terrible. Panic rises in your throat. You pinch the bridge of your nose, close your eyes, and breathe deep as you hear the soft coos of the audience. You can't let him get the best of you. You'll get through this. Okay. And besides, what are the odds? The rest of his hand, his. Ba That's supposed to say band. Band members know and participate in what he does. The chances are slim. You're okay. You're safe. He's probably the only person looking for you right now. And he's busy on live TV. You're fine. You glare back up at the screen with newfound determination. And Lauren smiles. Her severe features softened by the expression. I can tell you and... I'm sorry. What was your manager's name again? Saffron. I hate you both. Adam leans back in his seat, crossing me one crossing one long leg over the other, wearing the most radiant smile as he looks at the camera. I don't know how to say his last name, so I'm just gonna say Saffron. Your heart stops for a moment. He did not just say Saffron. He did actually. Not the same Saffron you ran into hours earlier. It is. <laughs> There's no way he found you that easily. He did. <laughs> but your gut tells you he did. Cause he did. <laughs> And now Saffron's card burns a hole through your pocket. Throw that shit away then. Unable to ignore the facts any longer, you withdraw your wallet from your pocket with shaky fingers and pluck it out. Pluck out the business card given to you hours earlier. Sure enough, in both in white ink, white ink, Saffron's full name stares back at you. Yep, Saffron, that's Saffron. Who works with Adam's band, Saffron, who licked your blood off his fingers like it was... Gamer girl bathwater. Oh, uh, the same man who ran into you at the gas station, which is only a 10 minute drive from here. That saffron. No, it's another saffron. The spice. He knows what your car looks like and the license plate numbers. He saw you get in it. He watched you as you drove away. You thought it was odd he didn't follow you, right? You were prepared for that because you thought he was just another creep. But now, you stand up so sharply, you almost knock your table over. I thought we were at a bar. <laughs> As you frantically scramble out of the booth. Oh, we're, okay. We're in a booth in a bar. I have to pay attention. This is bad. Really bad. There's no thought that you're meeting 
with Saffron wasn't just a big coincidence. He's probably patrolling the area, the entire area looking for you, and bada bing. <laughs> he found you within 24 hours. He's so diligent at his job. You can only surmise one reason he didn't come after you. It's because he's saving you for Adam. Mm, no, he didn't actually. Well, that's because I chose stupid things, but he doesn't. He did not save me for Adam. Stop. And once Adam finds out where, what area you're, you've hidden yourself, he's gonna come for you. And not the sexy kind of. I'm not reading that. <laughs> you need to leave and get your, to your aunt's now. You almost steamroll past the wait a waiter carrying a large platter and apologizing over your shoulder as you hurry out of the, the front doors. A voice calls out to you, but you ignore it, too occupied with getting the hell out of Dodge. The Arizona heat almost knocks you off your feet for a second time today, but you power through as you race towards your car and hop inside. The waiter who called after you is frantically waving his hands over his head. You rev the inch- Can you, like, find out what he's talking about or something? And if it's just my bill, I'm- I'm driving away! Save me the money! You rev the engine and pull out of the parking lot, not even paying attention to the waiter what he holds in his hands. He had something in his hands? Oh my gosh. Park Band, Arizona? Go home, I'm not here to run a charity case. Okay. Aunt Ruth's harsh words snap you out of your flashback. Oh my gosh, flashback. There's a bunch of liquor inside, vodka, rum, moonshine even. A good portion of them are half drained. And your aunt scratches her head, muttering to herself. When she notices you watching, she slams the cupboard shut. Go on, leave. I already told you you're not welcome here. Now get from this. Ma'am, please. I, I beg of you. At least give me some gas money. Damn. From the set of her jaw to the outward jut of her hip, you can tell she's 2.2 seconds from going off. She's a stubborn woman with southern grit and a nasty attitude to boot, but if there's one thing you know about her, it's her weakness for free manual labor. The entire reason she claimed to have married your uncle was because he took over the housework and paid the bills. A bona fide user, but you need to barter with her for a safe place to stay. Your eyes drift toward the sink clustered with greasy dishes, grimy dishes and cups filled with soaring milk and you just let that sit in there. They tower like a fragile stack of cards ready to blow. Wouldn't it, wouldn't you mean like topple over? Cards don't just blow up. You pick up a fork with dried flakes of something on the tines and wave it around. I'll take care of any and all chores if you let me stay. Her lips twist like she just sucked in a moldy lemon. Oh, sucked on a moldy lemon. But her jaw loosens and her initial stubbornness recedes. And grocery runs? You're pushing it. Done and done. Rip. She hesitates, but clearly it's just for show because she wants you to think she's doing you the world's biggest favor. Fine, but if you slack off, I'll boot your ass out back where little old Laverne sleeps. Laverne? Laverne? Laverne's a cactus. She's talking about a cactus. Won't be a problem. Aunt Ruth glanced at her cabinet filled with the devil's news. A codename she and her uncle called their liquor in front of you when you were a kid. When you asked for some of that, some at the tender age of nine, your uncle gave you a normal juice instead and tinged it with red food coloring. When your aunt threw a fit after she found out, he gave you the last cup. What? Of juice with red food coloring? Her temper tantrum lasted for four days. Yeah, an adult woman rampaging about juice. That's what I'm saying, what? That doesn't make sense. I thought you'd be mad about the actual alcohol. There's a reason your uncle's your favorite relative, despite not being blood related to you. Aunt Ruth opens the cupboard once more. While she's busy, you replace your fork with a sharp knife and hide it in your pants, despite the fact it's dirty. Better be better to be prepared if you're going out again. Make yourself useful and get me a carton of orange juice for my vodka and three scratch tickets, the $5 ones. She locates her purse and hands you two crumpled $20 bills. 
If there's anything left over, get some paper plates. You got it. You're about to reach for the door, but quick as a whip. She's already ahead of you and unlatching all the locks. This place is super safe. There's like, she has, she's super paranoid, one. And two, there's hella locks. And don't we like, did we like give the guns to somebody else? Because I'm pretty sure I remember our trunk being filled with a whole bunch of her guns. She probably has one hidden or something. That'd be nice. You don't even have time to think as you're ushered outside and tossed onto the porch. The door slams behind you, followed by locks snapping into place. You look at the money in your hands and reach for your back pocket where your wallet should be. Of course, that's what the guy was waving around, my wallet. Why did I put it down after taking the card out? It's not there, of course. You search your card next underneath your seats in the center console, as well as the glove compartment. Not there either. Did you remember the waiting calling the waiter calling after you, trying to draw your attention? Now you understand why. You left your wallet at the bar. Go get it. Oh my gosh, I don't want to. Uh, no, no. Okay, so he's in Arizona too. That's great. Are you serious right now? Adam enters Briar's bar and grill with slumped shoulders and the aura of a man who just lost everything. Bro, I. I can't, I can't do it, I can't. He pulls his baseball cap down to show his eyes as he takes a seat at the bar before waving the bartender over. Hello? What can I get? This is the bartender? Why didn't we see them earlier? Adam makes sure his voice cracks a little around the edges as he answers. Bourbon on the rocks, please. He lets out a pathetic sniff. What the f Why is he crying? He lets out a pathetic sniff while the bartender pulls out a glass. He works with practice, practiced efficiency, but Adam can sense the man's growing curiosity and concern over his behavior by certain cues in his body language. Like the way that the bartender chews at his lip as if he's debating on asking if Adam's alright. Or the way he places Adam's drink of choice in front of him, soft and polite, as if he's afraid of startling a deer. He's a natural empath. Uh, who cares? And <laughs> one that could easily be exploited for information. Perfect. Is there anything else I can get you? Adam solemnly shakes his head. No, I'm fine. Thank you, though. Oh my gosh. He keeps his voice soft and quiet as he rubs away the condensation of the lip of the glass. He forces himself to keep a straight face as the man shifts from foot to foot. It's almost too easy. Then, as predicted, hey, are you okay, man? Adam swallows thickly, and he can feel the man growing more and more worried. He's got his attention, this is perfect. Just, I got a little going on, I'm sorry. Oh, a lot going on, whoops. He sighs and pushes away the drink. I don't even feel like drinking this. I'm just a mess right now. Let's see what he's gonna do, because I'm honestly a little, I'm a little, um, frazzled. The man hesitates, but puts Adam's bourbon off to the side and raises his crossed arms against the countertop as he leans forward. Adam scrubs a hand down his face to hide his smirk. He really should try out for acting one of these days. He's too good at it. Well, usually actors can continue acting and not smirk underneath their hand. Yeah, that's what a good actor does. They act, not pretend. There's a difference. After he finds you and slits your pretty little throat, he'll bring up the idea of saffron. What? Knowing saffron- what? Knowing saffron and his desires for, a ban for the band to reach grander heights, he's almost certain he'll agree. But first things first, he needs to weasel some information out of this guy. You can talk about it if you- if you want, I'll listen. Adam shakes his head, face still covered. It's so hard not to laugh. Well, an actor wouldn't have this problem. Why are these people so easy? He clears his throat of laughter, although the bartender will think otherwise. I don't want to bother you, I've already done enough today. What? You did nothing. No, it's okay. That's what bartenders are here for. No, you're here to make drinks and hand them to people. Now listen to some douche's problems. I'm trying to spare you the, the heartache, sir. He's so sweet and sincere, Adam could puke. 
Oh my gosh. But instead, Adam just lowers his head and lets out a deep, shuddered breath. It's silly, but I got into a fight with my significant other. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It started off as a light argument. They were frustrated over something I said. And I responded negatively because I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> yeah, slitting my throat. Lovely. Just, that's normal couple arguing stuff. It's fine. Adam sniffs again. Then it spiraled from there. And they ran out of the house. Right. I spent hours looking for them. But I don't know where they ran off to. And they won't answer their phone. I'm so scared they got hurt. Mm. Brunton and grow solemn. Well, maybe I can keep an eye out and tell you if... Tell them you were looking for them. What do they look like? Normal. Adam whips out his phone and shows him a picture of you. It's one he grabbed off your social media and saved for this exact purpose. Photoshopping the two of you together in order to feed into his story. You know, it would have been fine if... If it was just a picture of me. It's not that serious. The bartender takes Adam's phone and scratches the back of his head. Oh yeah, actually they were here a couple hours ago. Adam perks up. Really? Are they okay? They're not hurt? This man is so dumb. The man gives Adam his phone back. No, they seem to be jittery and left their wallet behind. He passed the back of his pocket for emphasis. I picked it up and tried calling after them, but they seemed like they were in a hurry. I'm keeping it in hand in case they come back looking for it. Adam looks down at your photo with faked fondness. I'm so glad. Thank you so much. Maybe they're still near here. I couldn't help more. Adam allows a few fake tears to slip from his eyes. And he rubs them away with his thumb and forefinger. As if on cue, the bartender rounds the counter and soothes Adam with a comforting pat on the back. A warm, comforting presence to some, but to Adam, it's annoying. Pathetic. Still, <laughs> he's given him the perfect opportunity, and what kind of man would Adam be if he didn't take it? He stands up and hugs the bartender, who stiffens in surprise at the sudden gesture. Adam gives the man a hard squeeze around the shoulders, playing up his gratefulness in order to distract him from where his other hand travels to take uh, the wallet. His fingertips brush the top of your wallet and without hesitation, he slips it out and into his own back pocket. This happens without, um, within a matter of seconds. The bartender doesn't even notice, nor does anyone else. They're drinking, why would they care? He's got what he wanted, plus more. Now it's time for you to leave. Oh, it's time for him to leave before he overstays his welcome. He withdraws a decent sized tip and places it on the counter. Thank you again, really. Well, the bartender can't even respond, his eyes glowing, going wide at the, mo the amount of money. Adam's really out already out the door and heading back to his car. He inspects your wallet a few minutes later, away from prying eyes at a rest stop. Adam smirks to himself as he draws it out with relish. Who would have known you would have been this careless? For someone who's evaded him for so long, you keep making mistake after mistake. Really sad. I didn't want to help you. You know that, right? Like, my initial reaction was to just keep driving. But of course, in the world of you and him, we had to save you. Save you. He hums to himself. Tapping the corner of your wallet to his lips while grinning. Damn. He wishes he could see the expression on your face when you return to the bar to find out someone was looking for you. You're smart enough to draw your own conclusions with his from his trail of breadcrumbs. He licks his lips delighted at the pleasurable thought of you trembling in fear, like a lost little lamb cornered by the big nasty wolf when the bartender tells you. Will you die on the spot right then and there? I hope so. Save me from this debacle. Or will you wait for him to show his face first before succumbing to the realization that he's inescapable? Not if I die. Not if I die. <laughs> he hopes it's the latter. 
Adam can't wait for the chance to finally break you. But he needs to find you in order to do so. He looks back down at your wallet and traces the full black leather with his thumb, noting the warm, the worn inside and distinct smell of you. It's almost too much the way you flood his senses with your cloyingly sweet scent. I don't know. So he breathes through his mouth and focuses on sorting instead. Adam gets a sense of who you are as he ruffles through your re reward cards, study your driver's license, and counts each coin down to the last penny. Why? He gleans superficial facts about you, things easy to spot even without your wallet, and put them aside for a rainy day. Next are your crumpled up receipts. He scurs through them. They range from small purchases to much larger, larger grocery runs. None of them are relevant. He glosses through each of them with learned efficiency until he lands on the last one. It belongs to a gas station that's quite out of, a, out of the way from your residential area. The date is from yesterday, early in the morning, and quite a few hours before you pulled over to help him thinking he was a hitchhiker. He doesn't know why you drove down that deserted highway. He never needed to ask why people did the things they did before he killed them because they would never escaped. Not until you. But these are the most important questions because they're possibly a clue to where you're hiding. For what reason did you go into the outskirt of Park Bend? I had something to do. People do things like that have nothing to do with you. So, yeah. And why do so before making what he assumed was a long trip? He searches the other receipts for possible answers, but there is none. Adam leans back in his seat, pondering over loose theories, none of which hold any merit. Then it hits him. You were visiting someone. How did you figure that out? Maybe a friend or a relative or a lover? Doesn't matter why you visited them. With the possibility that you did, as well as the possibility you were hiding out at their place, could lead him back to you. How did you deduce that? It would explain the lack of receipts, and there's no other reason for you to visit. Any groceries would sit in a blistering hot car for hours, and he doubts you visited a restaurant. No, you visited someone. But who? That's a question he can't solve on his own, not without help. He flips open his phone and calls Saffron. I need you to do something for me. Die. Both of you. Together. At the same time. You sit outside your idling car while beating yourself up for a solid 10 minutes. Mistakes were made. <laughs> One piled on top of the other and crushing underneath their height. The biggest being... The fact that you agreed to drop off those stupid guns. You should have played sick or let your phone drift to voicemail because when your family calls, it's never for anything good. You want to bang your head against the dashboard until you pass out. Of course, you left your wallet because, of course, everything that can go wrong will. You're so tired of this, of the games, of hiding, of panicking, of not knowing what to do. Adam should be the one who's afraid, not you. Now when he's the one who has everything left to lose while well, you have nothing. But he's after your life, and while it's shitty at times, you're kind of attached to it. <laughs> Going out once for a grocery run wouldn't be so bad if you could just order future stuff online. But losing your license and debit card means you'll have to wait. And the last thing you tried replacing Last time you tried replacing your debit card, it got lost in the mail, and you're forced to wait two extra weeks. The delivery service sucks here, so more than likely, it's gonna happen a second time around. Which leaves you with two options. Either go back to the bar, risking running into Mr. Relentless, but minimize the need to go outside as frequently. Or, hope the delivery guy don't fail you and risk going out to get groceries for the next few weeks. Either option is great. Going to the bar makes for one big risk, while the other makes for multiple. The choice is obvious. You have to return to the bar. Damn. <laughs> you look at the cash your aunt handed you 
wishing she used debit cards instead. But the woman refused to expose herself to the online feds. Jesus. And works under the table. Everything comes either in crisp dollar bills or nothing at all. She always errs to the side of caution. But in all honesty, maybe you should take a few notes from her book. I guess, but it's too convenient. She's just weird and old, so. Especially with Adam on your tail. But you at least have something you didn't last time. A sharp kitchen knife glints in the passenger seat. Sure, it's grimy, but you at least can defend yourself rather than def being defenseless. You mentally prepare yourself on the drive over. There's no telling if you'll have to use it. Aunt Ruth! What?! Ruth stands beside her bed, looking down at the at an old photograph from before she ever got married. Oh, look at you. Oh, I thought it was this one. Whoops, it's this one. The one with no eyes. We've got a Christian. Is this... I feel like this could be... This is... This is, um... Damn, speak! Significant. Uh, the one where she's in the front of her old church the day after her high school graduation. Here, she's younger. Prettier. Hopefully, hopeful for the future. A sharp contrast to the woman reflected in the glass. Her eyes, tired from battling nightmares and skin wrinkled from age. How would her younger self feel seeing her now? Probably ashamed and disgusted. She knows herself is herself well enough to see that much. Back in those days, everything was sorted into meat. Oh, neat meat. Neat little boxes, and anything that stood outside of it was a menace to society. And those ideals matched that of her friends perfectly. So much so that her mother used to tease the six of them about being a hive mind. She's also the one that took this photo, catching Ruth and her friends mid-laughter with their matching cotton dresses of alternating teals and pinks. How many years has it been since then? We lost count. It's hard to keep track of months and days and years when they all bled together in one monotonous heap. Her ex-husband was the reason she was able to keep track of time. And now he's gone, taking all of her precious guns with him. What is with this obsession with guns? Did he know the real reason why she slept with a knife under her pillow and a revolver in her nightstand? Did he take them out of spite? Or is he really that thick-headed? She'll never know. Ruth places the photo back into her drawer for safekeeping and places the frame face down before slamming the door shut. She doesn't want anyone to lay eyes on her one treasure. The rest of the photographs she had got lost after she moved from state to state. Now it's all she has left of- Oh! There's a crash and Ruth screams before slapping her hands over her mouth. What was that? Her gaze- Please, no. Her gaze skates over to the source of the crash and she watches a as a large hand grips the ledge of the window. Oh no. What? Did they find her? The same person that got Alice and Grandy and Chelsea? What? Yet who else could it be? There's no one else who would do this. No one else is... No one else she fears for all this time. But how did they find her? She's always been careful, never leaving too many traces of herself online. And moving when she needed to. How are they here? Then it clicks. You. You must have brought them here. Stupid little. There's a crunch of boots and a soft huff of breath as someone crawls in with a head full of dark blue hair. Bro. Ruth watches with horror as a figure drops on the floor with practice ease and rises from the ground like Lucifer himself rising from hell. The intruder wipes the sweat off his forehead, giving a soft little huff of breath from the effort of breaking in. So nonchalant. Can you stop side eyeing me, please? I, I don't appreciate it. Like he's getting away with this sort of thing without facing any repercussions. This roots her to the ground. Her body frozen in place. Move. Move. 
Her breathing comes in unsteady pants. She can't even bring herself to even wiggle a pinky finger. She's so scared. All right, this is two separate things. I'm, I'm starting to think. Her little fear is of something else. This is not the same guy. This is a random guy. You're fine, ma'am. Unless he kills her out of spite. Why is he? Sh why is she so weak? He's always been so weak. Back then with her. And now this man who possesses a threat to her life. Oh god, help her. The man takes his time facing Ruth as he peels off his blue wig cap. Tossing them both to the ground without relish. With relish. He groans as he raises his head, massaging the scalp underneath the tangled mess of purple hair. He cross his cross earring glints in the light, capturing with full attention. Wait a minute. Why does he have that? She knows that earring. Just when I said that this is a separate, like, problem, she goes and is like, I know that earring. Do you now? Does it have significance to the woman in the picture? Well, she hasn't seen it since the unfortunate news about Clarissa. Came out back. What? And back when she wasn't, when it wasn't an earring. Oh, when it was a necklace? In fact, it was a pendant that belonged on a necklace. Oh my gosh. I'm a genius. A gift she gave to Clarissa for her birthday so many odd years ago. That's his mom's. I'm just gonna call her right now. But where did he get that? Oh, no, that's much better. All of a sudden, there's like a, a, a connection to this man, and I... What, what, what was he asking earlier? He was like, oh, do you believe in fate? It looks like it's fate right now. This, that's what's happening. Sadly. Unfortunately, the man groans and Ruth stiffens at the m melodic nature of his voice. It's almost eerie how familiar he sounds. Just a more masculine version of her. Oh my gosh. And those eyes. <sighs> what? Ruth's hands fly to her mouth as she tries covering her shock. You're not who I'm looking for. How do you... F I don't know how they find these places so quickly. Like, it's too convenient. His boot crunches over the broken glass as he covers the distance between them. He shrinks back. Please don't hurt me. I don't think he cares about you. The intruder slowly lifts his arm so he can see the hilt of a, of a blade tucked at his side. He smirks at the way she shrinks back, revealing in the effect he has on her. What was he saying? What? what? Go back? Reveling. He's sick, twisted. Ruth backs up against her nightstand. Her fingertips drift toward the handle of the drawer, and she works on inching it toward outward. What do you want from me? Don't you say I have nothing to give? I'd beg to differ, but I'm not the begging sort. You're not funny, clever, in any way. You're boring. Yeah. His eyes wander over to where she's inching the drawer open. What do you have in there? Something to kill your ass. I don't. He's <laughs> like, I don't. She yanks the drawer open and her fingers brush metal before Adam yanks her hand away by the wrist. Ruth shriek shrieks and he towers over her. Don't, 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 I, uh, I, uh, I, um, don't. Don't. I'm exhausted talking to you. I am. You're not supposed to play with guns. They're dangerous, you know. You're not funny, bro! You're far from a comedian! Get this dude out of here! I want him gone. I want to be gone from you. He says, flicking his free hand towards the revolver. And you wouldn't accidentally want to hurt me, would you? Shut up. I really don't like this guy. Nothing- like- Usually, I like I give a smirk or something like, oh, so quirky. <laughs> Push my hair behind my ear and stuff like. Mm. He is making me do none of those things. He's boring. I don't like him. Ruth's bottom lip trembles. 
She can't bring herself to answer it. And the intruder rolls his eyes before they land on the picture hidden in her nightstand. Oh, what's this? A picture of your mom's. Watch. He's gonna freak out. A little mental breakdown. He tries to grab her treasure, and Ruth's brain regains connectivity. Grabbing his arm before he can. Don't touch that. There's venom in her voice, surprising both her and the intruder. Look at that ugly ass fucking grin. Ugh, I hate him. The man actually cracks an annoyed smile. Ah, I see the family resemblance now. Turns out you've got a bit of piss and vinegar in you as well. So? And honestly, it's really annoying. He rips Ruth's hand off of his arm, sending her tumbling into her bed. Before she can make another attempt to stop him, the man picks up the group photo with a deviant smirk. Ruth knows he spots her because his entire body goes rigid, eyes snapping wide open like blinds on a window. He mouths a single word, and just like that, Ruth's suspicions are confirmed. She never knew what happened to him. She didn't even recognize him at first because he'd grown so much and changed everything about himself. But now, I'm sure you don't remember me, Adam, but I- Adam's face goes stone cold and the heat in the room drops 20 degrees, chilling Ruth to the bone. He grips the frame so hard the wood cracks from the pressure. Well, isn't this interesting? He looks down at her and the hatred in his eyes is absolute. If he didn't want to kill her before, he's almost certain he does now. Yikes! Oh no, our aunt's gonna die. Boo hoo. There's no reason he wouldn't at this point. They both know what she's done. What did she do? The grief she caused, that all of them caused, and now her karma has returned tenfold. He's going to die. Yeah, and she knows it. Ruth scrambles backward to the bed, on the bed before she hits the wall, as she withdraws his knife. As he withdraws his knife, yes? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What did you do? What did you do this time? Adam cocks his head, his grip on the hilt white knuckled. No, you aren't. A <laughs> little bit of a jump scare, it's fine, it's fine. Ruth screams as the steel descends on her, causing a few lazy crows resting on her back. Back want to go shooting upwards, up towards the gray, graying skies. Moonsoon season sure picks one hell of a time to pop off. Torrential? Torrential? Rain starts pouring down and soaking through your t-shirt, pants, and the worst offender of all, your socks, as you make your way into the bar. Your stomach growls the fresh, warm scent of food, and, the, and you crave both something to eat and a fresh change of clothes. But that'll have to wait until you get back, your aunt's, back to your aunt's trailer. Not to mention cleaning a massive stack of dishes if you want any utensils. You're pretty sure something in that sink winked at you. Oh, nah. Psst. That is a lost cause. If you could sneak a purchase for some cheap rubber gloves from the do from Dollar Street on your way back. A woman bustless? What? Pass you as you stomp on your foot. As it stomps on your foot as you try to make your way towards the waitress. Did she just stab your big toe with her four inch pump on purpose? By the way, she's smirking while texting on her phone. Sure says as much. What the heck was that for? Don't cut in line. For what? You scowl, resisting the urge to pull on Adam. To pull an Adam. By <laughs> juggling her phone. Juggling her phone into the fish tank sitting nearby. But the fish didn't do anything wrong. You instead turn away and head towards the front. Tossing a brief explanation over your shoulder. Not that you owe her one. I'm just shaking my wallet. I'm not waiting for a table. She grabs her. She grabs your arm, pulling you back, snarling. Hey, I said wait your turn. I'm sorry. Were you listening, or are you like stupid? The extra reminds you of him, and something inside of you snaps under the weight of it. Her next words die in her lips as you turn to face the woman in red filled with so much audacity. Her hand drops limply at her side. When you move toward her, she holds her hand up and you realize it's not your face she's afraid of. 
You're staring at your side where the kitchen ice rests. And that makes a lot more sense. Oh my gosh. Reminded me of Amori just, just for a couple seconds. Well, it works well enough for you as long as she doesn't start complaining stuff. I wasn't here for a table. You're so dumb. I wanted to get my wallet and I stated this. You don't really need the added trouble of getting pulled into a police station. You've got enough to worry about. I'm not here to cause trouble. I just forgot something, so can you leave me well enough alone? Can you leave me well enough alone? I don't sound right. The woman nods, swallowing hard while she takes a step back. A few people behind her grow curious and peer over your shoulder. Oh, her shoulder. Great. Gotta love the scene she's causing. Giving you yet another reason to hurry and get the hell out of here. When you make it past the crowd, you manage to catch one of the waitresses' attention while she busts bustles from table to table by tapping on her shoulder. Excuse me, but has anyone here found a wallet? The waitress drops her thumb toward the bar, chewing loudly in her in her gum. Thomas mentioned something about finding one earlier. Thanks. She waves you off as it as she continues onto her, her next table while you head toward a man dipped from head to toe in tattoo ink. As you approach, you overhear him making jokes in the middle with the middle-aged patron who pats at his pot belly. Jesse says dad bods are all the rage these days. Oof. The tattooed man Thomas chuckles as he pours the patron a drink and slides it over it. Well practiced aim. With well practiced aim. They're not wrong, you know. I'm sure you'll find someone who appreciates you for you. Just do yourself a solid and delete wi winder. That coming from personal experience? I heard about it from friends, actually. I'm not really into the dating or hookup scene, so all of my horror stories come from them. Bro. Patron nods in un understanding. Here's to that. Winder is dog shit. How old are you? Thomas chuckles again. But stops once you set up in the bar. You step up to the bar. He gives you a once over. His brow wrinkles, lip pursing. Have I seen you before? Bro, I feel like this wasn't that long ago. Maybe from earlier? I still left my wallet behind and heard you found one. Thomas snaps his fingers, finally placing you. Right, I tried chasing after you, but you left in such a rush, I didn't manage to return it in time. The patron takes one large swig of his drink before he stands up from the bar and nods toward Thomas. He pushes a crisp $20 bill this way. I guess that's my cue. Thomas holds a finger up. You've had a few. Is Jesse on their way to pick you up? Jesse. Why do I don't feel like I heard that? Oh, well, he just said it, right? The patron rolls his eyes and waves Thomas off. Yeah, they're already parked outside. Thomas nods his approval and the patron gives both you and the Leroy a two finger salute before making his exit. Who's a Leroy? Thomas pats the now empty space in front of him. Feel free to sit. Can I get you anything? No, I came to get my wallet. Can we get this moving? I don't get it. I want to chat with old Roy. I'm a bit offended. What? Bro, I gotta get back to my dead aunt. Come on. The smile says he's not the least bit offended. You like him almost immediately. What? No. But you're also still in a hurry to get in and out, just in case Adam somehow figures out you're here. I'm in a bit of a rush, so maybe next time? Can you promise? No! He says it and actually sticks out his pinky. You laugh. Oh god, it's been so long since you've laughed. As you hook your pinky with his. It's a deal. Thomas grins all boyish, sincerely, before drawing away and wiping down the other patient's glass. Glad to hear so out of curiosity, did you and your boo make up? Ah. Oh my gosh. I'm getting irritated now. Cause come on. I'm not here to make conversation. You're what now? My boo? You know, your man, your partner, your lover. Oh yeah, like I didn't fucking realize what you meant by boo. Get stop talking to me. I just want give me my fucking wallet. Well, I know you don't have it, but like your mood shifts from soft, vibrant yellow, glowing, and happy to an uncertain purple tinged with fear. 
What he says makes no sense. I don't... He came in here early looking for you. He said you two got into a fight and ran off. He was really worried, you know, afraid you got hurt or something. I don't give a... There's no doubt in my mind that man loves you. No. No, he doesn't. Please, stop. You scrunch your eyes closed as if it'll stop his words. There's only one man searching for you, and he wants you dead. Adam? How did he come in here without people noticing? An ugly cap. Apparently with a wig. I don't know. He couldn't have unless... Oh, that little shit. He disguised himself, didn't he? Barely. Talk about being a chameleon. Changing shape and personalities to suit his environment. Please. You probably already know that, though. Just stop talking. You give him a non-committal laugh? Smile? Something like that. Thomas accepts his, this answer, and he reaches into his back pocket to find nothing. He frowns. Strange, we got busy earlier, so I kept your wallet on hand. Did I drop it by accident? He lost it? No, wait. If Adam was here, he probably managed to get his grubby little hands on your property somehow. Which is bad. Because knowing him, he's going to figure out a way to locate where you're staying. You don't know how, but your sixth sense is tingling. I'm so sorry. I swear, I, the phone behind him rings, and he holds a finger. Mouthing another apology before he answers. Hello, Thomas from Briar's Bar and Girl speaking. How may I help you? There's a pause and Thomas rubs the back of his neck as he turns towards you. He mouths. Your boyfriend's on the phone. No fucking way. <laughs> no way. He knows you're here. How? How? Is he calling from outside waiting for you to come out? Come out wherever you are? Bro, no way. He's the type to turn his entire charade off his into a game oh so great if his into his game this is so like annoying thomas covers the receiver you should really talk to him who are you nobody exactly yeah because talking will solve the bad blood going on between you and adam he wants to impale you and not in a good way <laughs> on the tail end of his knife but thomas doesn't know that fine let me talk to him he must you motion for the phone and Thomas hands it over with a smile. And, oh, this poor sweet naive man. Not even. He's annoying even. Adam tricked him too, just like everyone else. Your words are cutting as, you're, as you answer, wanting to get the first word in edgewise before you hear this stupid voice. <laughs> Hello, honey. <laughs> you hear sniffling and a soft, quiet, and soft, quiet sobs of a woman. It's not what you were expecting. Hello? You can hear Adam speaking in the background of someone. When the crying woman speaks, horror floods you like a broken dam. That's... Gosh. Ah, so annoying. You grip the receiver so tight you almost break it. Thomas mouths. Is everything okay? You wave off. You wave him off trying to appear more calm than you feel. How did he get to Ruth? How did he find her? Adam comes onto the line, unnervingly chipper. Hear that? She's begging for your help. I couldn't give any more of a f When you come help her, I don't care about her just as much as I don't care about you. But yeah, let her go. Sure. There's more shuffling, and your poor aunt sobs get louder, and you can hear her begging for Adam to put his knife away. He's not holding anything. That hand has nothing in his hand. Come on now. Stop it. You grind your teeth so hard you almost break one. How dare he? How dare he? Go for your family. When you get your hands on him, you'll go straight for the throat. That's what you should have done the first time. You know, I didn't think looking for you would li lead me to this shit stain. But as it turns out, maybe fate does in fact exist. That's what I was gonna say earlier, but I didn't want to give him the satisfaction. I'm just gonna let him say it. Fine, I'm, I'm not a part of this. Who would have thought? I guess I'll have to recess my beliefs. This is between me and you, you asshole. Leave other people out of this. Ouchie. Oh, oof, touchy touchy. What? You're getting all worked up, and here I am being nice enough to put your dear aunt on the phone. I'm gonna break your fingers. I'd say I'm being quite generous given the circumstances. 
What circumstances? Are you talking about stalking me to the ends of the earth? Because if I didn't know any better, I'd say you're a bit obsessed with me. Careful, Adam, or I'll start thinking you've got an unrequited crush. Are you mad? Yeah! He's mad. Big mad. The words come out scathing, sharp as a kitchen knife hidden in, my, in your pants. And Adam goes silent on the other end. There's a sharp cry and Adam responds with venom. Every... Ever suggest something like that again and I'll start chopping off parts of your body. You bite your lip to keep from saying anything else. It's one thing if it's between you and him, but another when your aunt's involved. You may not be your favorite person, but you still don't want to see her hurt. What do you want from me, Adam? You know what I want. Bro, I might as well just kill myself now. I, I don't want to be around for this. You hate him. Yes, you're right, actually. You hate him. You wish a stray bolt of, <laughs> of thunder would blast him out of this existence. And Isekai his sorry butt into a world in, of pain and suffering. No, because most people, when they get Isekai, they get Isekai somewhere good. Or relatively good. But either way, they get to relive a whole new life. I don't want to give him that satisfaction. Fine, just leave Ruth out of this. Acting so brave, it's kind of cute the way you try puffing yourself up to be the bigger person. To be bigger when, in reality, you're just a scared little kitten. I'm tired of people calling me kitten. I'm real tired of it. I'm so sleepy at how tired I am. Like, take a big fat nap. Are you gonna scratch me with those little claws of yours? Yeah, this kitchen knife. This Glock. This AK-47. This Magnum. Like, all the weapons. He's baiting you. Anything you say will give him room to hurt Ruth. And knowing him, he'll- Can we just hang up? He'll blame it on your- on your behavior rather than his own sadistic tendencies. You keep your mouth shut. What, cut your, cut your tongue? Hang up the phone. I, as soon as he said, Hang up the phone! When you still don't answer, he turns mocking. Hello? Hello? Are you still there? No, I'm gonna hang up the phone. If you don't answer within the next minute, I'll drill a hole in your beloved aunt's head. With what? You only carry a knife! You don't scare me! I don't get you. What was that? You're kinda quiet. I said I don't get you. You're a weirdo. Your hand slams against the countertop and Thomas jumps from where he's standing, holding the conversation between him and a new patron. Lover's quarrel. <laughs> you explain to the patron and Thomas who stares at you with concern. Back to Adam, you lower your voice a few octaves. I didn't even go to the police. I left you well enough alone. Why can't you return the damn favor? Because you're a stain on this world, just like this aunt of yours. You don't even know about me. I've done nothing to you. I know enough. Now I suggest you refrain yourself from throwing another tantrum or I'll make do on my promises. Do it then, no balls. I don't care, I don't care. Did you know that? You do as I say, I'll let your aunt live. You mean live long enough for her to watch you as you slit my throat? Adam chuckles darkly. Either way, she gets to live another minute. If you don't comply, I'll kill her here now. Go ahead, Uncle. Not to mention I've got eyes on that bar. They'll track you wherever you go. Who's there? Now you'll be good and come back to you, won't you? You close your eyes trying to have a mental breakdown. Trying not to have a mental breakdown. You're trapped like a rat in a cage. And if you even try to tell try telling Thomas to call for help. He's going to kill Aunt Ruth and the second you open your mouth. There's only one available option. You have to face him again, your little worst nightmare. Fine, where do you want to meet? Do I really need to spell that out for you? Exactly. Your aunt never leaves her fucking house. Go there. You dunce. The trailer. Adam gives a slow clap, sarcastic, dripping in his tone. Congratulations, you put two and two together. Now hurry up or she'll play, pay the consequences. Lay the consequences? I was right the first time. Your aunt screams... And then the line goes dead with you standing in place trying to keep him from hurling the tang of bile in the back of your throat, both strong and ascetic. 
Your thoughts spiral out of control in a vicious tornado, tearing through common sense and destroying your sanity by the minute. Adam resorts to using your own family as a bargaining chip in order to get what he wants. You got Aunt Ruth. Yes, I know. You don't have to say it twice. And it's all your fault. It doesn't matter how you feel about her. This is your fight, and now he's being... She's been drugged into the middle of this... Into the middle of this sick and twisted game Adam is playing. You couldn't forgive yourself if she died because of you. You have to save her. You have to. Can you... Go then. Go. A hand touches your shoulder and you jumped like you were shocked with a live wire. What? Shocked? Oh, okay. You whip around and find Thomas staring at you with growing concern. Everything okay? You seem agitated. Thomas, I understand. You know, you're doing this to be nice, but it's like, it's annoying. Yeah, I just need to head home. We've got some stuff to sort out. You know, a couple stuff and a lot. <laughs> you can hear the tremor in your voice, but Thomas doesn't seem to notice. He just nods sagely. I wish you the best of luck. Fights with loved ones are hard, but they turn out okay no matter the end result. Yeah, a bitch is gonna die, so. He gives your shoulder a reassuring squeeze as if to emphasize, emphasize his point. Yeah, thanks for the help and advice. Totally. You hope he's right, because things are going to get dicey in the next half hour and you really don't know if you're gonna make it out of this a lot outside you find yeah debris picked up and flies through the air trees bend and almost break damn we on a hurricane the weather matches how you're feeling right now as you sprint across the parking lot to your car to your left you see the headlights of a small referred truck blasting your car with their windshield wipers whipping back and forth when you get to the driver's seat and head straight for the highway, it pulls out after you and begins its pursuit. You try- Oh my gosh. You try weaving in and out of, in pers of pursuit, anything to shake them off. But no matter how hard you try, they always remain two tail lengths behind. It's not until the midway point that they start tailgating you. You assume this is what Adam meant when he said he had eyes at the bar. Whoever it is- Whoever is in that car is his informant. The damn stalker. Did they call Adam as soon as you showed up? You're betting they did. How else would Adam know to call you there? It's probably that guy that was talking about dad bods. Like, you- shut up! He knew what you were going to do before you did it. He's playing a game of chess. And now he's getting closer to winning this nasty-ass game of his thanks to his helper. Or it- Maybe it's saffron, but at this point, I don't care. I don't. And as soon as you stop, you peer into the rearview mirror to see if you can sneak a peek at the driver. You catch a flash of familiar way here. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Is it sensing your eyes on him? Adam is a form waves. Saffron. Yeah! Yeah! These two. You're half tempted to go into reverse and ram your bumper into the grill of his car, of his truck. Your hand hovering over the gear stick, fingers twitching at the side, at the idea. No, you can't. You wrench your hand away and force it back into the steering wheel. If anything goes down, he'll tell Adam. And then your aunt's blood will be on your hands. You need to stay compliant because now there's more than one life at stake here. Yours and hers. You need to play things carefully. It's your best bet, it's your best shot at making it out of this alive and without bringing any more harm to your family. You take a deep, shuddered breath, stay calm, stay collected. You try to stay safe. The rest of the drive feels long and torturous as you force down your hectic thoughts. Thunder booms in the sky while wind tugs at your car and your heart thuds well over the speed limit. I wish it was this fast to get here as it was to get to the bar. It was just... But no. When you finally reach the trailer park, everyone's lights are off, either asleep or out drinking. You pull in front of the aunt's mobile home and step out as the ref refer truck stops behind you. They keep their lights on, illuminating your way as you walk up the steps. You hesitate before knocking. There's a pause. Your breath almost seems as loud as the rain. 
What awaits you behind this door? What have you come to find? When there's no response for over a minute, you almost consider knocking again. Then the locks start clicking. Click. He's in there. Click. Where will you turn? Where will you run? Click. <laughs> He's going to kill you this time. Click. Death is here. Click. Oh. <laughs> Your time is up. You touch the doorknob as soon as you hear the last click. I was right then. Inside the lights are off. Glass crunches under the soles of your shoes. With each step you feel like you're suffocating. He's here. He's here in the same room. Waiting. Watching. You can feel the presence presence in the dark lurking like a monster sizing up its prey. Why isn't he seeing or doing anything? Usually he can't shut up because he loves hearing himself talk so much. Right? Oh my gosh, so annoying. At least from how he pretended presented himself on the highway so long ago. You swallow the lump in your throat and dare to speak. I've done what you asked. I'm here. I'm the I'm the one you want. Now let my aunt go. You wait, nothing but silence. You try peering through the darkness, searching for his silhouette. But everything bends together in odd shapes. You reach out for what you think could be him, but your hands land on the messy dishes from earlier. Where the heck is he? Your hand goes to your hip, waiting for him to tackle you to the ground like he did last time. Adam? You take a step back, wondering how he managed to conceal himself in such a small space. Is he going to springboard out of out from under the table like a toy jack-in-the-box? You wouldn't put it past him. You get ready to check the, under the table, just in case, and turn towards it. Something brushes your ankle and you yelp, taking a few steps back. Lightning flashes, allowing light to appear through the broken window. You realize that's where the glass came from. And as for what's near your ankles, you scream at the same time thunder booms in the sky, lightning illuminating the room once more. Your aunt lays motionless on the ground with her body covered in blood that soaks through the brown carpet. And above her, above her stands Adam. So he killed her anyways. Amazing. He holds onto her arms while the other goes to scrub the streak of blood off his face. He finally speaks, his words drip with poison wrapped in velvet. Well, well, well. He steps over Ruth's body and drops her head, her hand. His pace slow and dangerous like the hunter on the prowl. He takes a step back but hits something in the process and tumbled onto the floor. You're so f***ing ugly. Like I hate your face. Moving on. You stare at Adam's wide frame in horror as he traces a hand along the curved edge of his knife. Then he bends down to your level, tips your chin with up with the point of his blade. Ugh. His forever cruel smile returns as he continues. Looks like I finally found you, my elusive little pet. Good, 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 good. Good end. Oh, I can't see. No. It was going too fast. That was literally torture. That was torture. He's so annoying. I didn't think he was gonna be that annoying. <sighs> if you guys enjoyed that very, it's gonna be a very juicy long video, then please leave a like, right? <laughs> it helps me. It really, it really does. I don't know why I paused. It does help. It also makes me super happy. And did I say comment? No, I didn't say comment, please. How do you guys feel about this douche? Is he everything you've dreamed of? And you know, with, with all that being said, <laughs> I will see you guys next time. Yeah, that guy was really annoying. <laughs>